Hello my lords and welcome to the grand finals of the Good Against Evil tournament for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King between Mr. Smog and Sauron in the best of 9. But before we gonna jump into the first game, I wanna remind you that you are able to watch every single game and even more than that, live on our Twitch channel. But how can I find it? Glad you are asking, check the description down below and click on Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Thank you in advance, see you in the next live stream, let's jump right into the first game, shall we? First game, at the bottom side of the map we have the orange Dwarven player Mr. Smog, our world champion 2019, our world champion 2020, against the blue Angmar player Sauron, the best battle for Mid a Middle Earth 2 player there is, and I have really high expectations from this series. Best of 9 is nice because this way, even if you have a bad start into the series, you have still a great comeback potential later on, because in order to win the best of 9 series, one of these players has to win 5 games, which is much much easier said than done. We have two mills coming up for Sauron into the Hall of the Kingsmen. On the other side, we see two mineshafts into the Hall of Warriors. So pretty normal and pretty standard start actually from both the players, guys. Nothing too crazy, nothing too spicy so far. Uh, I think dwarves they cannot they can actually be a great faction in this map because you can hide your tunnels for, for example around this side, but also around this side, and that's gonna be the plan from Mr. Smog early on. The thing with the dwarven faction, though, in my opinion, in the lead scheme, you're gonna fall off big time. That's why Mr. Smog has to make something happen early on. And again, we're gonna have only good against evil matchups. That means, uh, you know, dwarves against Engma, but also elves against Engma later on. Because Mr. Smog was signing up with the Engma faction for the evil part as well as Sauron. Nick says, welcome. Anubis, welcome. Aragorn, Arangorn, welcome. Bats, bats, bats. I don't know how to enable them. Maybe Velenorian can do it. Looks like Hisoka is not back in the menu, boys, just yet. We're gonna have a pikeman start after two mine shafts from um, the dwarven player Mr. Smog guys. On the other side we have some trial masters joining the battlefield first. And because of the pikeman start I'm assuming Mr. Smog wants to creep. He might potentially creep the uh, troll layer at the top right side. Look where his build is. I think he's waiting for a chance to... never mind. He's gonna actually creep this one at the bottom left side. My bad. So nice positioning also about the mine shaft. Look you can see that there is a rock. Um, which makes this, um, you know, mineshaft kind of safe. You cannot attack that from the back side anymore. The only way Engma player can destroy that is from the front side. There is a Trailmaster unit from Sauron on the field, guys. Let's see if he will be scouting this area and looking for some potential mineshaft. Again, this is going to be very, very important for Sauron early on. You want to see this mineshaft early on? That's a very nice move here, by the way, from the Engma player. He was able to scout this mineshaft and is going to be able to take it down. Okay, actually. He's going for the white creep. Alright, I didn't see that coming. Oh, the money was also secured by Mr. Smog as well as the creep. The pikemen, they need to disengage though because they can't, you know, win a fight in a 2v1 situation like this. Pikes are weak against swordsmen and in this case, Kundabad warriors are gonna be the winner of this fight. Okay, guardians on the field. And so far, pretty nice job actually from Sauron. He was able to destroy two mineshafts. He was able to kill the pikemen. Yes, Mr. Smog was luckily able to secure the creep and the money as well, but still, not a great start so far from the Dwarven player. Yes, another build around the top right side. He was building now a mineshaft here, but the Engma player has vision around this area, as you can see with the builder. And he keeps up the pressure all the time. This Gundabad warriors are almost level 3, and they're gonna keep attacking 24-7. Oh, they are, they are running it down though. <laughs> they are running it down to the fortress range. The Trailmaster has to be careful. Rallying Call has been used for the first time. We have also wolf packs now coming from the Troll in Wolfsen, from Sauron. And these units, we see them almost in every single game. I like this micro a lot. Look at this. Now you can keep running away from this, you know, with this units. And actually, this way, he's abusing the fact that the Guardians from the Dwarven faction are quite immobile in compared to every other Swordsman in the game. This way, you can always hit and run. You know, run with the unit you are getting chased, and the other one can always attack. Try to buy some time and try to keep those guardians away from your mills. That's the goal. And the Engma player, he's gonna be able to accomplish that. Unfortunately, his Trailmaster got sniped down. That means he will end up losing one of the battalions. And also, unfortunately, he was kind of forced to use the Warchan defensively, which is not the greatest. The Mineshaft here is being under attack. The builder has to get in safety by entering the Mineshaft potentially. Otherwise, he's gonna go down. Let's see if he can make it out alive. No, he can't. Uh, he's gonna get some more guardians on the field to keep the builder protected, I'm assuming. Because the builder, by the way, is not in the range to build a wall hub. That means if he wouldn't get these guardians on the field by time, uh, he would be losing this builder. 
and you know how terrible that can be actually for the Dwarven faction to lose a builder like that in the early game. Okay, Angma player is in a safe spot so far. Uh, he didn't lose a single mill, and if we take a look into the current command points and power points, we can see that Mr. Smoke has 3 power points collected, 450 command points available. On the other side, Sauron has 350 command points only. He has 4 power points collected, though. Nice one, nice timing with the Wolf Riders, beautiful trample is incoming. The Guardians are quite tanky with the whole crown stand, so you need to trample them down multiple times. I think like 4 or 5 times to kill them. Engma is going for a counter attack, but remember, Warchan is not longer available for Sauron, he was using it defensively earlier. He has enough power points for the Felwinter, uh, which is one of the best spells, one of the cheapest spells as well. The mineshaft in the front side is going to be taken down, there is no protection, he has one um, Guardian inside, but that's not going to be enough to keep this mineshaft protected. Smog is in a bad spot, because uh, Engma play has units everywhere, and he's also doing a nice job defending himself. Quite nicely, actually. Again, not a single mill of the starting mills is touched so far, and every single one of these three is gonna hit level 2 very, very soon. Beautiful. Felwind is gonna be now unlocked from the spellbook of the Engma player Sauron. And what a great start. I like it. Sauron uh, is doing a nice job, and he has to do that because, um, you know, you have he has to eventually win two best of nine series, while Mr. Smog can afford to lose the first one. This mind job is gonna be taken down. This is going down next as well. Nice one, beautiful. The wolf packs, they are not very smart against guardians. They are nice against pikemen. They are one of the best counters to the pikemen. But again, taking down this mineshaft next to the Hall of Warriors is the key to victory. Trust me on that one. That's the most important mineshaft from the dwarven player, Mr. Smug. And he lost every single one of the starting mineshafts as well. That's not uh, looking very, very great for the dwarves. And once, you know, once again, uh, once you fall behind with dwarves, it's very, very hard to win the game. So Sauron has definitely a great lead right now. Valindra, welcome. Ave, ave, welcome. Yeah, I mean, I like that, that he actually was able to keep all these mills alive. And look at this. They are gonna hit level 2 now. That's gonna increase his lead. By 50 command points against 300 command points only, Mr. Smog has, doesn't have too much money as well. He might go for the King Brand maybe. But he has to also get some more units on the field. Commitment with the Warchant. The Mineshaft is going to be taken down once again and that's the scenario you need to pay attention about. The wolf packs are killing those pikemen in no time. Just like that. Smog is going for a counter attack but again you can see that the Dwarven units are quite immobile. That's why you heavily rely on the connection with the Mineshaft. So you can attack. By using the mineshaft next to your Hall of Warriors and then using the mineshaft next to the base of your, of your opponent Sauron, this way you don't have to walk. Dwarves are not made for walking, as you guys know, as Skimli was also saying multiple times in the films. Dungeon99, uh, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Rallying Call was used now offensively, Rebuild was used now, by the way, on Hall of Warriors to keep it alive. Hall of Warriors is the tankiest barracks in the game with level 1, it has 4000 HP, which is very a lot. Ed Squirrel, uh, 30, thank you also so much for the follow and welcome. Appreciate that so much. Okay. And also, a uh, Milf Hunter. <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> this guy's names. Alright, beautiful. The mineshaft has been, the mill has been taken down from those guardians. They are now level 2. They can potentially use the charge attack, but they are getting trampled down 24 7. Uh, let's see how much more damage, but the snow trolls are coming in just in time from the level 2 troll and wolf 10. Okay. Beautiful trample one more time with those snow trolls. I like it. And Sauron is doing a nice job, but this game isn't over yet. Smog was actually able to survive. He has 400 command points available against 500 from Sauron. And yeah, he was keeping up the pressure very nicely, but during all this time, he was not really expanding as much as he could and as he should. That's why the lead in terms of command points isn't that great. You have my sword. Pepperoni. No, Piz uh, Pizzerino, thank you so much for the follow. The you are making me hungry now with this name. Thank you so much. Alright, the, uh, the builder from Sauron has to be careful. But again, you know, Guardians, they have no way of catching him. And now there is a time for a counter attack. Warchan is going to be available sooner than the Rallying Call guys. And the Engma player has almost 8 power points collected. With 10 power points, you can unlock the Orc Summon. And use it in combination with the Warchan offensively. And that maybe should be enough to actually deal 
the damage he's looking for to win this game. And look at this, waves of waves of units are being sent forward by the Engmar player Sauron. And there are, there are not many units on the field anymore, battle wagons could be a nice choice, but he has not the economy to do that. As he keeps losing those mine shafts, look his money guys, he's poor. This mine shaft is going down next and it's gonna drop down Mr. Smog to 300 command points only. Remember 200 you know, command points are the big, you know, it's the minimum. You can't have less than that. Because you are always starting the game with 200 command points. So he has basically now these two mine shafts and that's it. The pressure is real. Uh, yes, he, actually he went for the frozen land. Not orc summon. I would like to see the orc summon more in this situation though. Um, but frozen land is also not terrible because it's gonna give you leadership. Which again is able to stack with the war chant. So you can make your units quite strong. And it looks like you want to commit against the Hall of Warriors. Rebuild is going to be available. No, it's actually still on cooldown, so he can use it. One more beautiful trample with the Wolf Riders. There are no pikemen on the field from Mr. Smug. And I can smell a GG very soon. Um, because I don't see it coming back from this situation. And Smug is not going to even say GG, guys. And the game is over just like that. And Sauron was able to get a great advantage. Elves against Engma, and I think um, most of the time when we have seen this matchup, it was the Engma faction who was able to win. And also yesterday, for example, when we had the games between Mustafa against Sauron, we have seen this matchup many, many times. And I think Engma has like 100% win uh, rate in this one. Let's see if Sauron can break it. Let's see if he can make it work with the Elven faction against the Engma player, uh, Mr. Smog now, who is 1-0 behind. Two meals are coming up for Mr. Smog. That's an early Varax, by the way. From the Alvin player after one mile on three only. So he might go for the Lorien Warriors and actually go for a go for harassment early on. But he can also recruit some pikemen instead and go for the creep in, you know, on the left side of the river potentially. King stand Not a Rohirrim! Rohirrim! Hey Joe, thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate that. Arkes Hoshgeld Hoshgeldiness, Sefagetirdiness. <laughs> wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. He arrives precisely when he means to, exactly. Alright, two Malon trees, Barax into the Lorien Warriors now. Um, uh, he will have the units on the field a little bit sooner, but I think by the time they reach this area, Smog is gonna have some answer, right? With the Trial Master, he might potentially turn them into the Gundabad Warriors. On the other side, uh, Warchan and Rallying Colors are chosen now by the players already. And Lorien Warriors are indeed leading forward. In a one on one situation, the Lorien Warriors they should be, you know, basically able to win against the Trial Master units. But I think that's fine for Mr. Smog because his goal early on will be to buy as much time as possible. Again, both these factions are able to scale quite hard into the mid to late game. And I feel like elves uh, shouldn't be underestimated in the late game because they have really strong arches with the Mirk Woods. They can go for the early calves like Lancers to actually buy some time, stall. And the weakness of the Alvin faction, and I keep saying it all the time, is the weak siege. So you don't finish the game with elves until you get ants on the field, right? Your damage output against buildings is quite limited because most of the time your army is going to be almost exclusively based on archers. Rallying call has been used. Commitment. Nice one here from Mr. Smog. He's trying to buy some time with the builder by building a wall up. Oh! That's not good, guys. That's not good. The build has been taken on and the mill is going down right after. Smog is molding. Trust me on that one, guys. Smog is not happy about the start of the game number one, of, of the game number two. I mean, after losing the first game, this is not how you want to continue. That's the best possible outcome here, by the way. Very well done from Sauron. Smog was trying to do that same situation. I mean, the same thing that Sauron was doing yesterday against, uh, against King Mustafa. But the builder is down, the mill is, is down, yes, he will be able to kill the Lorien warriors right after, but their goal is achieved, guys, okay? So they can die now in peace. At the very same time, he's also gonna be able to creep this work lane at the left side of the river. Oh, the money, the money, 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 money! Oh, he's gonna pay, he's gonna get it. I can't, I can't see it when someone is leaving money on the ground, you know? We have right now 350 command points for elves, 300 command points for Engma. Yes, you know, Wolf Riders on the field, Kundabat Warriors, Extroverse. Yes, also Warsh an advantage right now. That's a good thing for Mr. Smug. Oh, he's riding in town into the pikemen. He's gonna lose a couple of these um, Wolf Riders, but that's not a big deal. 
And also smart move here from, you know, Mr. Smog that he doesn't use the war chant immediately. You don't have to rush things. You need to be patient and you need to look for the best opportunity to use it. Now it might be a nice timing to use it on this all units and that's gonna be also the case. Again, there is no buff available for Sauron, guys. Let's see how much damage now Mr. Smog is gonna be able to deal against Sauron. Yes, one Pikeman, one Lorien, Lorien, one Archer all alone, that's it. Build is getting in safety by building a wall up. But so far, not a single Malone tree has been taken down. But again, Mr. Smog has the time he needs. He doesn't have to rush things. Beautiful trample. A uh, bad fight for, you know, around this area because the fortress is going to be very, very helpful. This Malone tree is going down for sure. And Mr. Smog now doesn't only have to, you know, deal massive damage to Sauron, no. But he also has to buy some time. Because if this fails, uh, Sauron will have a chance to go for a massive counterattack. That means Mr. Smog now has to build an army worthy of Engma. Um, Demacian Garen. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Appreciate that. Demacia. Alright. Uh, Engma play is actually retreating for some reason. I don't understand. And he was also not able to deal the damage I was hoping for. This Malone tree is going down though, which is not bad. Two Malone trees only, but I, I need to give credits also to Sauron. He was able to be patient, play safe. Traumaster? Traumaster is going down. It, that's gonna actually be... Yeah, that's the weakness of the Traumaster units, you know? If the Trauma Master gets sniped down, like in this situation, you will lose the entire battalion. Just like that. Look at this counter units, guys. Please. Just focus for a single second. Look how fast they're gonna be able to take down this Pikeman. They are one-shotting them pretty much, right? I mean, literally one-shotting them. They are the best counter to the Pikeman by far. The Smil here in the front side is gonna be taken down next. Elven player is going for a counter attack now. Rallying Call is available. But once again, the weakness of the Elven player is gonna be... Uh, the weak infantry units against buildings. He's trying to buy some time. Felvin is being used now from Mr. Smog defensively from the spellbook. Yes, actually a little bit more power points collected than his opponent. 400 command points now for Mr. Smog. 500 command points on the other side for Sauron. Uh, the pikes are down and look at this health from the wolf packs. They are almost full HP, so they didn't lose any HP. They are also using the uh, heavy spike colors, which is gonna make them tankier. Five power points collected now for Sauron. He can he can invest these power points into the heal if he wants to, but most of the time we see them either going for the uh, either going for the uh, Elvin Wood or the Mist. Both can be nice against Engma. Maybe Elvin Wood can be also nice against Engma. Who knows? Smoke has to build some more mills as he does. Uh, one Hall of the Kingsman only, level one, and this also level one. He might get some snow trolls later on on the field from the level two troll and wolf ten. During all this time, uh, one wolf was able to survive, and I have to say it. Leave one wolf alive, and the sheep are never safe. <laughs> Arya Stark, rest in peace, uh, Game of Thrones. Okay, six power points collected. 525 command points now for elves, and 500 command points for Mr. Smog. The game is kind of even, even though Smog yet a really rough start into the game. He's also going to be able to contest this creep at the top left side, and he's going to be able to secure the lair, which is very nice. Not going to only give him power points and experience, but also money. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to say before is, Smok had a really rough start into the game after losing the builder, after losing the mill, and not being able to deal the damage he's looking for. But now, he's actually winning those small trades on the map, which are going to be able to bring him back. You know, killing the pikemen around this side, for example, with the wolf packs is a nice thing. Trying to keep the uh, keep the fight around this area is a big thing as well. Noralink is available just yet. Heal is available for the Elven player. And I like the fact that Smok is not wasting time but also always using his buff advantage offensively. That's very smart and very nice. The Wolf Packs are murdering the Spikemen guys. And they are actually a great counter to the normal and classic Elven game style. Look at this. That's, some that's something the Elves they like to do not, you know, in almost every single matchup. Make archers and then make pikemen to protect them. But this wolf packs, they are actually killing those pikemen so fast that this is not working very nice against Engma. It's not working very nice. And Smoke is now turning the game around. Uh, slowed down, by the way, by trampling down too many units. One more trample coming from Sauron's lancers. Very nice. Uh, Smoke has no pikemen around this area, which means these lancers now they can kill everything. Beautiful, very well done. Uh, the wolf packs are also quite tanky against archers. I mean, I was expecting them to die, to die way, way faster. But even archers need ages to take them down. They are really strong units, actually, guys. 
maybe they had to, they have to get turned down a little bit in the in the next patch because I feel like they are really powerful. Like there is not a single other unit, not even heroes, can take down the pikemen in the porcupine formation, for example. Unlike the wolf packs from the Engma faction. All right, uh, pikes around the bottom right side. They're gonna go for the creeps. Smok is trying to get some more money. Almost eight power points collected by Sauron. Six thirty-five command points. He is still in the game. Building like an outpost now in front of the fortress with the leadership behind and the sustain from the well. On the other side, we have nine power points almost collected for Mr. Smok. He might go for the frozen lands. He might go for the Gundabad summon. Let's see what his choice is going to be. We have also now Volta on the field, guys. As a as a sportive hero for the for the Trailmaster units. For the extra words for the pikemen. The creep is gonna be secured. And yeah, Orc Summon might be not the best choice because he has now some lenses on the field, and I feel like if your opponent has lenses on the field, Orc Summon is kinda useless. Because he will see that coming and he might just go for a one trample and he will be able to kill like the majority of the Orc Summon. What you can potentially do is the frozen land, which is not bad. Uh, because Voldom doesn't give leadership, for example, to the wolf packs. He doesn't give leadership to the wolf riders. He doesn't give leadership to the Gundabad warriors. But Frozen Land does. The Frozen Land, in this case, will be able to stack with the Warchant buff from the Spellbook. And you can eventually make your units very, very strong. And also, on top of that, Frozen Land, unlike the Tainted Land from the Goblin or Mordor faction, is not getting covered by the Elven Wood. This is not possible. Oh, alright. I see you, Sauron. <laughs> We are building a wall, alright? We are building a wall now, but uh, they were still able to cross over. And this is something which is actually quite smart. Because this way you can block this entire pathway, guys, at the bottom left side. And you don't need to be worried about this, about the attack from this pathway anymore. And again, this is gonna give you the chance to focus through the middle or to the top side, you know? The Alvin player is looking for a counter attack. But again, look at this army from Sauron. Do you see that? It's based almost exclusively on archers. So even if he wins this fight, Oh, Orc Summon it is, uh, on top of the enemy units, into the Felvin to disable the clump. Rylinkola has been used, Warchan is on cooldown though, he was using Warchan already, my bad. And Sauron is getting outnumbered big time, the statue is not up yet, it means no leadership is available for the Alvin units, Mist is gonna be used though. That's gonna debuff the leadership, and uh, I mean, the nullify the leadership from Waldo and also debuff the units on top of that. The Orc Summon is able to give uh, Engma the number advantage he was looking for. Lenses are here. gonna go for one more he trample. Arrives precisely when he, means to. he arrives precisely when he means to. John Zalf to Black, welcome. Alright, one more trample. He has now Horse Archers on the field, okay. Uh, Volda is level 3, guys. It means every time he kills a unit or a building or the units around him, he's gonna get some money. No Pikemen left around this side, and the Alvin player will actually be able to win this fight, which is very nice. I like it. Waldo has to run for his life, and he will be able to get in safety. He's quite healthy, so I think he should be fine. And once he's level 5, he will be able to summon more Hillman, but that's a nice fight for the Alvin player. And again, he has a wall around this side, as you can see. That means um, Engma player has no way of entering this side, because killing a wall in uh, Rise of the Witch King for normal units is nearly impossible. You have to literally invest like minutes of your time uh, to be able to break one part of that. You need siege weapons to do that. And on the other side, he's building like an outpost here. He has leadership. Engma has no way of nullifying the enemy leadership until he gets Witch King on the field or Sorcerers. That means not any soon. The Wolf Tan is level 2. They are gonna get some Snow Throws on the fields now for Mr. Smug. In the meantime, um, we have some Lancers and also Horse Archers. That's a nice combination. You can use the Lancers for harassment against the buildings and the Horse Archers are nice against Snow Throws. Look at this fight. Use hold ground stance like he does. Very smart, aggressive stance with the horse arches. This way you can actually out damage the snow trolls. Engma player is building an army, uh, but he might need some um, black or dark rangers later on with the level 3 all of the Kingsmen. I feel like you need the long shots now in order to win these fights. Because Orc Summon is gonna be on a long cooldown, right? It's not gonna be available any soon. White allies summon might be also not bad. We have now Vault, uh, we have now Hydra on the field. Uh, the first hero from Sauron, the Alban player. He is getting some more horse archers on the field, which I don't like them that much, you know that. I would like to see more strong archers like Mirfoods instead. But, I mean, the good thing about the horse archers is that they are quite mobile, so you can always hit and run, hit and run all the time, you know? Okay, Snow Trolls. 
Now it's like a build up time, right? No one is doing anything. Uh, Sauron is gonna build a tower on a nice spot. In order to kill this tower, he has to walk uh, all the way around that. Malibu Flow, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Hope you guys are gonna enjoy your stay. Appreciate that, guys. We have over 200 viewers, which is awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Soka, welcome. Erby, welcome. Okay, Engma is now going for a massive attack with leadership, and Warchan is also available. He's gonna use it potentially. Felvin is available as well. Uh, he's committing against the tower with the Extrovers. Warchan is being used. The Extrovers are get receiving leadership from Waldo. Mist is on cooldown for the Alvin player still. Felvin is going to be used. Snow Trolls are diving in for a beautiful and juicy trample. But these units have double buff. They have the leadership. Oh, never mind. The statue has been taken on already. Aldir is leveling up like crazy level 2. Frozen Land is going to be used offensively on top of the enemy units. That's going to not only give you leadership, but also slow down the enemy units. And Frozen Land it gives also leadership to the Snow Trolls. And yes, the Engma player will be able to force Sauron away from this area, which is huge. He was able to kill the tower. He was able to kill the outpost. Yes, he was kind of, you know, going all out for this fight. But it worked out quite nicely. But again, he's making the mistake that he is not having enough pikemen on the field. During all this time... Uh, Sauron was going for harassment. He's gonna be able to kill some males left and right. Beautiful trample from this Lancers. I like it. This mill is going down, which was almost level 2. He might be forced to retreat now with the Lancers in order to defend this attack, which might be very necessary. Uh, Skyrim Moon and also Alien Pro 93. Thank you guys so much for the follows. Appreciate that. I mean, he has like a, another outpost around this side, so he will be just forced to retreat a little bit. He has 710 command points available. The barracks are still only level 1, so no transition just yet into the Mirk Woods. You have my sword. And also, uh, Yura Wheel uh, 26, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Miss is now going to, be, going to be used. Snow Trolls are quite tanky. And once they are level 2, they will also have the charge attack, just like Guardians, but also Black Numenorians. Um, talking about Black Numenorians, we might get to see them later on. But so far, every single one of these three Hall of the Kingsmen are still level 1. Engma will be forced to retreat. Mist was used for that though, which is not bad for Mr. Smug. Because for the next attack, he will he might potentially have his uh, Orc Summon available once again. Look how slow they are on the frozen land. Do you see that? <laughs> it's like slow motion. Okay, uh, 850 command points available for Engma. This might be one of the longer games. He will be even able to spend some of the money into some battle tower expansion as a defensive expansion around the fortress. This is level 2. Uh, I'm, he's now finally going for the level 2 of the Kingsman. I think he's gonna also upgrade this one now to level 3, guys. He might also purchase the Venakeri upgrade. That's gonna be a huge power spike, as you guys know, for the Snow Trolls. Since they're gonna unlock the charge attack with that. And this, not, and this Harad, not Haradrim, sorry. This Linden Horse Archer units, I don't like them that much. The second hero is uh, Glorfindel. Uh, he will be able to force the opponent units away. I think if he clumps against Glorfindel, he can actually take him down. It's a 3 versus 1 situation and there is no backup just yet. Engma is on the frozen land. 11 power points, almost 12 power points collected. On the other side, uh, we have 12 power points collected for Sauron. 15 can unlock uh, the Eagle Summon, for example, and he can use it uh, to kill the fortress. I think that's the reason why Mr. Smog was building now some battle tower expansions, because Smog is an experienced player. He has a feeling about the power points his opponent has. So, Investing now some money into the expansion, which might be helpful later on, is actually a smart move. I like it. Dalvin was used to disable the units. The builder is going to be taken down right there. Look at this. The builder, there is no way he can survive this. It's going down. And that's a massive and strong army from the Engma player. Gundabad summon, bunch of extra overs, snow trolls are coming in clutch. Almost 15 power points collected. He will be forced to use this power points defensively. Trust me on that one. He's gonna go for the Cloud Break, which is really good against Engma. Engma has zero fear resistance, guys. Cloud Break is. Oh, but he was running it down. Very nice timing with the heal summon from Volta level 5. As they were going. As, did you guys see that? As they were going for the trample, they got spawned, and he was riding right through the pikemen and lost majority of the horse archers. Just like that. Snow Trolls are still very healthy. The you know, finally the, tra the, the transition actually into the Mirk Woods. But he has only one of them, two of them on the field. They are getting stealth by using the Alvin Cloak. The steeple is going down next. The good thing here is that he has zero pikemen around. That means once these horse archers are recovering you know, around the well, they can go for one more trample. But that's what I mean. Look how useless the horse archers are in those kind of situations. You know, They are not bringing too much to the table. 
Uh, Glorfindel on the other side was able to kill two males. He's, he's now level 3. That's gonna unlock his Blade of Purity. Which is gonna make him hit like a truck. It was even much much stronger before. Before the nerf. It used to give you 100% damage and 100% armor. Now it only gives you 50. So you are not unkillable, unkillable anymore when you are using it. Look how much damage he's taking. Kill his own cooldown. He has to be careful. Oh, level 5 extra worse and he's gonna be taken down. There is no way. Uh, Blade of Purity, but too late. Too little. He will, keep, he will be able to kill some units, but that's it. And Glorfindel has been taken down. Alright. Nice positioning with the mid quotes. I like it. Snow throws are quite tanky, guys. 670 command points available for elves. The uh, elven player Sauron. And Freezing Rain was used. Alright. Freezing Rain is a nice debuff. It's gonna... It's like a, a cave bat for the entire map. So you're gonna, de you know, debuff the enemy units and nullify their leaderships, which is very, very nice. Waldo on the other side is now level uh, almost 6. With level 5 he unlocks everything, including the Hillman summon, which was used before. Haldir is only level 3, level 8 is gonna be a nice power spike with the Golden Arrow, which is like a smaller version of the Cloud Break, able to stun the enemy units, which can be very effective. Uh, Frozen Land is gonna be available for the next fight. And again, you can use the Frozen Land for the, you know, for the, for the offensive purpose, right? You can use it on top of the enemy units. And this way slow them down. If heal throws on the field, they are very, very tanky. But not tanky enough to come, you know, to kind of withstand the damage of the mighty Mirkwood archers from the Elven player Sauron. These snow throws are scary. And that's what I mean. Smoke is going for it, using the frozen land offensively to slow down the enemy units. And now the snow throws are charging in. Into the pikemen. But they are not taking too much damage. Haldir is running for his life. Mirkwoods are strong, yes. But they are only strong in terms of damage output. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have also the Witch King on the field from Mr. Smog. I like it. Witch King is here with the strongest debuff. By minus 33% damage. Blight is available if this is not going to be enough. He can now use Blight offensively as he does. The units are going to receive damage over time. And once they die, they're going to turn into the army of the Vites for the Angma player. And he has to retreat. I mean, the Blight, as you can see, in those kind of situations, it's not very impactful. Because you have nothing to keep them on the Blight. Ideally, you want to use the Blight in combination with the Felwind. So you can use Felwind to disable them. This way, they will have to spend multiple seconds on the Blight. And hopefully, they're going to die. Otherwise, it's kind of useless. And he was actually able to survive with every single unit. Still many, many Mirkwoods on the field. Witch King has to be level 2 in order to become... Uh, very impactful. He's level 2 now already. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, Henadi. And also, thank you so much for the follow, uh, JJHD. Appreciate that. And also, Akabuk and XRS Store. Thank you guys so much for the follow. And, uh, hope you guys gonna enjoy your stays. Glorfindel is back in the business. Witch King is diving in way too deep. He doesn't care. He's very, very tanky. He has the splash damage. Hitting very, very hard, as you can see. Uh, but he has to be careful, because mounted heroes in Rise of the Witch King are very, very vulnerable against Pikemen. I mean, he's very tanky, guys. He has 6,600 HP. So he's not gonna go down that fast, trust me. But still, there is no reason of, t you know, taking free damage. He gets plus 300 HP per level, which is very, very impactful. Oh, oh! The Mirkwoods? Oh, he's down, and Haldir hits level 6 after that. Oh, that might be a throw though, because if you lose Witch King like this, it's kind of bad. 18 power points collected for Sauron, and he's, try he's trying to tell to us, this game is not over yet. 18 power points collected, zero. Did you guys see that at some point he had like zero resources? <laughs> Alright, almost level 6, Glorfindel. Level 10 is gonna unlock the Starlight, which also is a stun. And Engma is a faction that cannot play around that. There is no counterplay to the stun as the Engma faction. Look at Glorfindel, he was two-shotting this Waldo almost. Uh, you know, Cloudbreak is almost back up. And by the next time he's gonna use it, he will have also a bunch of Mirkwoods on the field. They're gonna, they are gonna hit like a track. Glorfindel is running for his life. We have some upgrades now on these units as well, it looks like. The Iron Blades are purchased from the Siege Works, level 2. And uh, where is the Siege Works that it is? Level 2. Level 3 is gonna give you the chance to also purchase the Heavy Armor, guys. Make your, you know, units much more resistant, actually, against the Mirkwoods. And the Alvin player has not the money he needs to go for the armory himself. Orc summon once again on top of the arches, very nice. There are no lancers on the field this time, Felvin is being used. Black Monorians are here with the level 2. 
Again, that's gonna unlock the charge attack. And the Alban player has to retreat now. He has to run for his life. Can he save the Mirkwoods now? That's the question. Klausbreak is almost back up. Look at the cooldown. He's spamming it. I can tell you guys. He's trying to use it all the time. But it is still on cooldown. It's available now. He has to make sure to use it. In, and in, you know, during all this time, he has to make sure to kill multiple units. If Haldir hits level 8 and he's really close for that. Look at this power spike from Haldir once he's level 8, guys. Golden Arrow. Gonna stun all the units. Can he protect this level 3 Malon tree? That's the question. Uh, the builder has to be careful from uh, Sauron. He's running for his life. And we have now the giant uh, summon offensively. Cloudbreak is still available. 25 power points collected for the Alvin player. He's gonna go for the Sun Flare. And ladies and gentlemen, he is using the Sun Flare. And look at these giants. They are running for their lives. They are burning alive. And he will be able to keep himself alive for now. The siege has been protected very nicely as Elrond is joining the battlefield for the Alvin player Sauron. This game is not over yet. Okay, Waldo was able to survive. Sunflare is gonna have a huge cooldown. But because of the, uh, you know, he was, look at this. He was going for the Giants, Freezing Rain, and the Blight. All of these three are 15 power wizard points. wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Exactly. Look at the fellowship of the album, album player, guys. He has now Elrond, his daughter uh, Arvin is on the field. He has Haldir level 8, I believe, right? He has Cloudbreak available for the next fight. And during all this time, these hill trolls were able to kill the troll creep at the top right side. Uh, is Witch King back on the field yet? No, that's not being the case. Yes, uh, purchased uh, heavy armor as well from the siege works. No troll stone throwers just yet for the siege. Uh, and Arvin is going to be able to get away. Let me take a look into the heroes once again. Haldir is level 8, golden arrow is available. So he will have double stun next fight, right? He will have the golden arrow stun and once the duration from the golden arrow is gone, can use the cloud break right after to stun the enemy units once again and this all together can buy Sauron the time he needs to deal the damage he's looking for with the Mirkwoods. They have leadership guys remember that Witch King is not on the field uh, the freezing rains effect is gonna be gone once cloud break is gonna be used that means the leadership is gonna be again available for the Alvin army with the Elrond but also Haldir next to them and also on top of that mist is available so what you can do potentially is you use Cloud Break, you use Mist on top of the enemy units to actually make them weaker, since they're gonna lose 25% of their armor, and also nullify their leadership. Okay, Golden Arrow that is, that's the stun from Haldir. Orc Summon, Mist is available by the way, he can still use it, he is not using it. They are still stunned, look at this, Cloud Break is not even used yet. And some people are telling me you are always thinking about, you know, saying about Haldir is so powerful but he's weak. Did you guys see how much impact a hero like Haldir had now during this fight? He cost 1,200 resources, guys. And now Cloud Break for the big stun. Uh, the problem here is definitely the, the fact that, you know, Sauron has way less units on the field than his opponent does. Arvin is being used for map control fights. Arvin is a quite uh, strong hero once she hits level 6 with the flat. Glorfindel on the other side is going to be level 6 very, very soon. Level 10 is going to be another stun with the Starlight. And the Starlight is very, very nice actually for the Alvin army. Because not only you will be stunning the enemy units, but also you will give them the spell which is always able to stack with the with the war chant or rallying call in this case from the spellbook, with the leadership of the heroes. And you can make your units really, really strong with this. Yakonik, welcome. Thank you so much for the follow as well as uh, Jelokim. Appreciate that so much. Elrond is level 2. And level four, level three is gonna unlock the Atelas, which can be nice in this situation. And also, Atelas available for uh, for Arvin. That means they will have potentially three heals available for the heroes, which is very nice. Mirkwoods are getting trampled down by the snow trolls. They have the heavy armor purchase. They are quite tanky. They don't die too fast. And I think in this at this stage of the game, in order to deal the damage and burst down the enemy units, the Alvin player needs the Silvertone arrows. But for that, he has to spend. Lots of money, and first of all, he has to get this building to level 3, which is gonna cost him a bunch of money and also lots of time. Then, power points collected, which can be invested, for example, into the Alvin Wood. And there is nothing around this side. I mean, from the Alvin player at least. The Engma player is expanding more and more. Look at this mills, guys. Every single one of them is level 2, almost level 3. And uh, Sauron is command points capped, that's the problem. Full command points for Mr. Smog, great resource income. 
he keeps losing stuff so he has to actually you know replace all the units he's losing but he's also investing a lot of money you know recruiting strong units like Pelic Monorians, Noltros and purchasing upgrades on these units to make them stronger. Snowbind will be used to keep this level 2 mill alive. That's another 5 power points investment which was definitely not necessary in my opinion because all of that stuff is delaying his 25. Okay, Elven army is still alive, Elrond can also be very effective later on once he gets the level 5 restoration which is another heal. So look at this situation guys, how much sustain the Elven army has right now. Do you have to heal from your spellbook uh, for all the units including the heroes, then you have the restoration with uh, Elrond once he's level 5. And on top of that you have Atelas, double Atelas from one from Elrond and one from Arvin to heal up the allied Nervi heroes. So you, so you have so much shield. Oh, we have now Rogash on the field, okay. Rogash, the level 3 mill is gonna be taken down. Remember, Snowbind was used before. Arvin has to be careful, the Hiltros are hitting very hard. Did you guys see that? They look at her and she's gone. Okay, I mean, Builder has to be careful. He's going down, alright. The Builder is down from Sauron. And he lost. Oh, 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 oh! That's crazy, guys. That was. Did you guys see that? It's like a magic trick. Now you see him, now you don't. Glorfindel disappeared within a single second, just like that. Glorfindel down, Arvin down, and also the builder is down. Okay, Orc Summon on top of the enemy units. I'm telling you, these hill trolls are hitting very, very hard. Light Summon, I like it. Disabling the enemy units, body blocking them, and look at the army of divides, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the Engma army now. Dust is gonna turn these elven units into the divides. Just like that. Golden arrow is gonna be used from high gear to stun the enemy units, but he has to be careful, he's left alone. The divides are not getting stunned, and they are running it down. And look at this army, guys. Elven players to be careful. The eagle summon will be used defensively to deal with the enemy units. He has to try to defend himself. Don't waste time attacking Rogash, in my opinion, because Rogash is so tanky. You will, the end eagles kinda are dealing like negative damage to the heroes. I think if you wanna buff one thing, it has to be their damage against heroes. They need like one hour to kill one, like a hero, like for example, Haldir, you know? Just try to kill the units instead. Mirkuts are still alive, one of them is level 5, that's the max rank in Rise of the Witch King, unlike in BFME 2 or BFME 1, in which the units are able to level up to level 10. In Rise of the Witch King, they do only uh, get level 5 max. And level 5 is a nice power spike for the units because they're gonna have automatically the fear resistant in their kit. And yeah, look at this HP from Troll of the North. So he's still full, full HP, you know. Just kill some mills, try to go for harassment. For the next attack, uh, Blight is gonna be on cooldown. But he might have the summon giants available once again. 18, almost 19 power points collected, guys. For the Engma player. Avalanche might be a possible choice. The Wolf summon might be a possible choice as well. Let's see what he's going for. Um, Atticus, thank you so much for the follow. Broco Loco, thank you so much for the follow. The Real Better, thank you so much for the follow. And the Lonely, the Lonely uh, Act Head, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, I mean, don't under underestimate the Alvin army, though. I mean, size doesn't matter everything, right? He has Mirk Woods. Uh, he has really important and highly leveled heroes. Unfortunately, he lost so often before. The heal throws are taking down this side. Look how much time they need, even with the Forge Blades. <laughs> the wall is so tanky against normal attackers, you know. On the other side, we have now Morgami on the field, as well as Waldo and also Rogash. And actually, Mr. Smoke was not reviving his uh, Witch King just yet, after losing him early on. Okay, one part of the wall has been broken. Now we have finally Silverton Arrows purchased, and that's gonna change pretty much everything, guys. It is a massive power spike for the Alvin players out on. But the problem is, once the Engma player has the power points he needs, for the 25, he can unlock the Avalanche for example and use it on top of the enemy units. Maybe the Wolf Summon wouldn't be even the best choice because I'm assuming that this Mirkwoods with this much DPS can actually burst down the Wolf in no time as well. I think what the Engma player has to do is kill these units first. They are diving in, not every single one of them has the Silver Thorn purchase because it's very expensive upgrade, costs you 300 resources. On the other side, uh, the Sun player is still on cooldown, almost 6 power points collected by the Alvin player. 
He's diving in. Cloud Break is available, guys. Can be used for stunning. He's gonna use the Golden Arrow first. That's a stun. And that's the power. He's gonna use the Cloud Break right after. Cloud Break is negating the effect. Morgomir is diving in. Felvin is coming in clash from Mr. Smog. Morgomir is now running for his life. The units are still stunned, as you can see. They are not able to move. And no fear resistant for Engma is coming in clutch in those kind of situations. And El Elven army is able to stun the enemy units multiple times during one fight all alone. Arvin is back in the business and she's level 5 already. Level 6. And believe me on that, it's gonna be a massive power spike for the hero from the Elven faction. Because that's gonna unlock the flood, which can be one-shotting one of the level 3 mills just like that. And again... You know, uh, stun is gonna give you the chance to use it also against units. So you can stun the enemy units with the golden arrow from Haldir, and then you can use flat on them from Arvin. Okay, Rogash was able to survive, and the thing is, they can do little to nothing in those kind of situations, you know, because Rogash needs some levels until he gets strong. Level uh, 5 is gonna unlock the leap, which is, uh, which is like the leap attack from Gimli, and level 7 is gonna be a huge power spike for this hero as well. It's something like Bleed Master, 100% damage, 100% armor, and this way he can always dive in. Because 100% armor is gonna make him really resistant. Oh, uh, Witch King is back in the business, Morgul Blade was used from him to cripple her down. She is not able to move, where is your husband when you need it? Now she's released from the spell and Arvin is running for her life. And she will be able to get away for now. For the next attack, Sunflare is gonna be available. How much Engma player needs for the Avalanche still? 3.5 power points, I mean, might get it during the next fight. And I think Smog has to now be fast, because he needs to use the time when the Cloud Break is on cooldown, you know? If he waits more time, the Sun Flayer is gonna be up, which is gonna be all alone enough to defend. You can use Sun Flayer on top of the enemy units and you can one-shot them pretty much. It even deals massive damage uh, to the enemy units, on heroes I mean. A10 command points available for the Elven player, full command points for Engma for a really, really, really long time, guys. And also Elven player has a lot of money, look at his money. He has enough money now, for example, to get some, you know, Nolder Warriors on the field. But he has to first of all make some more Malone trees in order to extend his command points to full. Beautiful trample, abusing the fact that there are no pikemen nearby. One more beautiful trample. Let's take a look into the power points from Mr. Smog. 24 power points collected now. Golden Arrow was used once again, and someone tell me that Hydeer is not impactful, guys. He is stunning the units once again. 26 power points collected. The Summon Giants is available from the Engma player, Mr. Smog. He can use it right after to finish off this game by killing the Fortress. And look who is here. You know, the story is our parents were telling us about the big bad wolf. There he is for a summon uh, to kill the Elven army. And all the heroes are still remaining on the field. Uh, you know, Garfindel has to be careful. Orc Summon will be used now. Giant Summon is ready, Sun Flayer is still available for the Elven player, he can use it now for defense, he has to use it potentially around this side to kill all the units. The Wolf is gonna commit, he's actually dancing around, look at this, doesn't know what he's doing, slapping with his hands, he can also use some abilities, I don't know why he doesn't. He can always call the, call the pack, which can deal damage to the buildings around this area, it's like a, like a dragon, uh, you know, the Summon Dragon deals damage, as you can see, to multiple units and uh, buildings at the same time. The Sunflare is still available for Sauron, but I don't see a coming back from this situation. He lost almost everything, guys. He has barely any units remaining on the field. The only hero I see alive is Glorfindel, and that's it. I take it back, there is also Arvin being still used for harassment. She's trying to kill this mill, which should be the case, and that's gonna unlock her level 6. And also Hydir is on the field, almost level 10. But no heroes to give leadership to, and the commitment now against the Fortress. The Sunflare is still available, the Wolf is gonna be gone very very soon. And Mr. Smog is gonna be able to make the score even after this one. What a long, interesting and a fiesta game it is. That's what I mean, you see that? The flat ability was just one-shotting a level 3 mil just like that. And Arvin is a hero who only costs you a thousand resources. Sunflare is gonna be used offensively and he knows. You know, even if I use it defensively, that's not gonna change anything. This game is over and Mr. Smog is gonna be the winner. What a nice one. In the second game, in the best of nine series, in the grand finals for the good against evil tournament, guys. Money, but no units. The giant summon for the siege, and that should be it. Thorsten, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. We demand more fiesta. Very good game, yeah, guys. It was a nice game, and we have seen every single hero from the Engma faction this time. 
and also from the Alban faction, every single one of them was on the field, which is really nice. Fortress is going down just like that, and the score is even now, which is pretty nice. At the top left side, we have the blue Angma player Sauron against the orange Dwarven player Mr. Smog at the bottom right side. Who's gonna start with one mineshaft and the second mineshaft. On the other side, we have two mills start from the Angma player, so pretty standard uh, start in this one. And no early barracks coming up just yet. The first time they played this matchup, it was Sauron who was able to win. Milo1029, thank you so much for the follow. Ogabuga01, thank you so much for the follow. And Nikki, F Nikki Funky, I was not even there. Thank you for the 20 bitty bomb. Thank you for streaming this. Thank you for watching this, Nikki. Appreciate that so much for having you here alongside with every other one. Appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Man, Mr. Smog win all uh, championships? No, that's not true. He lost actually the Christmas tournament we had a couple of weeks ago against Fairy in the finals. He also lost the Christmas tournament we had last year against, against Imperialist, so he lost also a couple of games. Hey, welcome. Alright, Warden is available for the Angma player and Rallying Call is available for the Alban player, guys. Uh, for the Dwarven player, sorry. Uh, he's gonna start with the Guardians first. On the other side, we have the start of the Trial Master unit. And in a one-on-one -on -one situation, once again, it's very uh, obvious that the Guardians are gonna be able to out-damage the Gundabad Warriors. And once again, Mr. Smog's early game, early game's goal will be to, um, you know, kinda build some mineshafts close to the side of the Engma player. An Engma player has to scout the area in order to deny that from happening. They were able to see each other with the builders at the top right side. The mineshaft is up on the field and he has already one guardian inside, guys. At the very same time, what are the Trailmaster units doing? That's the question. I don't see them. The wolf ten is coming up now. K3 Logsov just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Uh, Kellogg's, 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 thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that so much. I mean, for the subbing, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused, so much, but it's even better. <laughs> thank you for the prime, means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for the spot. Alright, uh, Guardians are going to be in time just to defend this against, against the Gundabad Warriors again. They're going to be able to win every single 1v1 situation. Smok is going to be able to sneak one of the main shafts at the bottom left side. And the attack continues. You actually want to keep up the pressure. And the goal is um, to keep... Oh, the Thrall Master is going to get sniped down. Just like that. And he will be able to keep this mineshaft protected. Nice one here from Mr. Smog's Fortress. This mineshaft is going down next to the Skundavad Warriors. And Sauron is doing a nice job actually scouting the arena. And trying to kill every single mineshaft. And that's the way you want to play this matchup. Against Dwarves. Because if you don't do that, you will be surprised about the potential attack, and it might be too late. Because once they reach your side of the map, they use the rallying call offensively. Look at this, guys. And even the mighty pikemen from the Dwarven faction are just getting one-shotted. Rallying call is going to be used on the Guardians and on the pikemen. The creep is going to be secured by Mr. Smog. During all this time, the Gundabad warriors, they will also be able to scout this area. The builder from Mr. Smog has to be careful. He might lose him. And he has to run for his life. But the mine shop is going to be taken down unless... He might get his, you know, guardians out from this mineshaft and try to keep this protected, but that's not gonna be the case. This mineshaft is going down right after. Smok is not positioning himself very nicely, and he won't be able to keep it alive. And that's very nice because this way, Smok is not gonna be able to get more reinforcements on the field in time. All right, uh, Bronhilda22, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. All right, beautiful. Uh, the wolf riders, they need to be avoiding the spikemen, but on the other side, even the even the buffed spikemen are dying very fast to this to this wolf packs. Uh, Bastiro, thank you so much for the follow as well for the follow as well. Thank you guys. Okay, Engma is now moving for a counter attack, and he has the buff advantage. Remember, Mr. Smoke was already using his own buff offensively. That means he won't have it available anymore for defense. And he has not much around this area, and I don't I don't see him being able to defend this mineshaft, by the way, guys. 
We gotta give credits in this matchup for uh, Sauron. He's always scouting, always. He has units at every side of the map. And this could be seen as a, as a guide video, how to play Angmar against Dwarves. I think he's playing a perfect game in both games in this matchup. He's doing a really nice job. This matchup is going down next in the front side. Warden Advantage is coming in clutch for Engma. Guardians, they are strong, but they are not strong enough. It's They are getting outnumbered, out, uh, out buffed. The Mindshot is going down. Build has to be careful. He's gonna be able to get in safety and building a wall hub to, you know, body block this side. Because losing this Mindshot is very bad. And once again, Smoke is down to 400 command points. He has barely any units remaining on the field, guys. And if you have them in an open field like this, they are kind of they are kind of useless because again, the infantry units from the dwarven faction are quite immobile, and they will never be able to chase or catch the enemy units. Mineshaft has been scouted by Engma, and I like the way I'm a fan of this gameplay from Sauron. He's doing a, such a nice job in this one, such a nice job. Yeah, I think the bro I think the wolf packs, guys. What do you think? I mean, we have seen many many games so far, and I feel like they are broken. I mean, they are really broken. I mean, I can understand if they are a counter unit to the pikemen because that's the description, right? Strong versus pikemen, that's obvious. But they are not only strong against pikemen, they are murdering them. <laughs> and on top of that, they are also strong against anything else. And they are also very tanky against swordsmen, against, against lancers, against pretty much everything. And on top of that, they are also very cheap for 250 resources each. They are so strong. The builder is not able to enter the mineshaft. Oh, that's, that's bad for Mr. Smug. He's gonna lose the Builder right after. Oh, never mind, he's gonna get some pikemen on the field in time. And Guardians to keep the Builder alive. But there is no way of getting now into inside the mineshaft for getting back in time. And he has only one Guardian around this area to keep this mineshaft protected. And by all means, guys, this is not gonna be enough, trust me. Alright. Rallying call is going to be used defensively on one guardian all alone. Uh, it's a 1 versus 6 situation. There is no way. Like buffs in Rise of the Witch King are impactful and powerful, yes, but they are not this powerful, guys. Trust me. Smoke is going for a counter attack, which will not include the rallying call. It was used defensively. And this mine job is going down next. And that's the thing. Sauron is doing a, such a great job killing all the offensive mine shafts from Mr. Smoke 24 7. And cutting such a you know important part from the Dwarven faction's gameplay. Dwarves, they wanna be mobile with the mineshaft connection. They wanna be able to teleport from one side of the map to the other side. And denying the mineshafts is the way to shut down the dwarves completely. And that's the second time he's being able to do that successfully. Very well done here. Alright. So we have King Brand on the field, level 1. King Brand is a nice hero against Engma. I like him. With this slam shot with level 2, you can hit you know multiple units at the same time. And so far, actually in the first game, but also not in this game, Smoke is not going for the battle wagons. Maybe battle wagons is the way to go. Because Engma won't have the chance to negate your leadership. Do you want to get battle wagons on the field for giving such a big sustain to your uh, to your guardians to make them stronger? And on top of that, you can also use the battle wagons to trample down the Gundabad warriors and the extra overs all the time, you know? 350 command points only for Mr. Smog. Again, 675. Almost double the command points available from his opponent. 7 power points collected by Sauron uh, after the Warchan and Felvin. And he's looking strong, guys. He's looking really, really strong with the Engma faction. And that's impressive. Not only because, you know, that's gonna potentially lead him for a, one more advantage after winning this game, but also. Uh, Sauron is normally a BFME 2 player, you know, and uh, in BFME 2, Engma doesn't exist as a <laughs> as a faction. So that's impressive that he is able to play Engma at a such high skill level, which is awesome. This mill is going to be taken down, and Warchan is going to be used once again offensively. This mineshaft is going down for sure. Smoke has little to zero defense around this area. He can't keep those mineshafts protected can't survive this much damage and this much harassment. He doesn't give him any time to recover. He's attacking him over and over and over and over again. And I like this. I'm a fan of this gameplay. I like this so much. King Brand is level 3 now, has the slam shot ability available. He's gonna draw the sword and try to kill this mill, but his damage output is kinda limited. 
and he will need ages. We have now some, some snow trolls on the field. Smoke is trying to survive with his builder. Uh, he's pressing S all the time, as you can see. This way you can make the enemy unit stop, but I think it's gonna be... Oh, never mind, he's gonna be able to survive. The slam shot is coming in clutch, though. Look how much damage he was able to deal. And almost one-shotting the entire battalion, just like that. Because they were using the aggressive stance. When you use aggressive stance, you sacrifice armor for damage, pretty much. Alright, just take a look into the minimap, guys. The map is looking blue to me. We have double hall of the Kingsmen, Wolf 10 level 2. Uh, for the Snow Trolls, which are much, much better and much more stronger than the Wolf Riders from the Engma faction. There is only one Hall of Warriors and one Mineshaft and that's it. Sauron was doing such a great job checking this area, expanding offensively, denying all the Mineshafts. King Brand is trying to get in into the safety and he will be able to do that by entering the Mineshaft. But that's it, there is not a single Mineshaft left on the field anymore at the left side of the map. Not a single one. And Smok is down to 250 command points, that means he has only this one mineshaft guys and that's it. Now he has two finally, but again, he has barely any units remaining on the field and there comes the orc summon. Warchan is available, no, it's on cooldown. So maybe this is not a smart idea, but let's see if Sauron can make it work. With the Warchan combination and the orc summon, that could be the game ending move by the way. But they are now missing the Warchant, which makes them quite vulnerable, right? They are taking way too much damage from the Fortress, and King Brand is hitting very hard with the Slam Shot. He was able to kill quite a lot of Orcs, just like that. The Smineshaft is going down, and Smoke is dropping down once again to 300 command points only. Alright, the Snow Trolls are coming now as well. There are no Pikemen from Mr. Smoke. we already know what it means. The Trample is coming in clutch, and the Guardians are almost gone. And Smoke is not even calling it GG, guys. The Fortress is gonna get demolished. Right guys, we have the orange Engma player Mr. Smog against the blue Elven player Sauron and we have seen this matchup already one time on the map Falls of Ice and it was quite fiesta, back and forth, we have seen heroes hitting almost level 10, we have seen the Witch King of Engma, we have seen Rogash, we have seen everything and finally it was Mr. Smog who was able to win, that's why the score is now 2-1 and let's see if Sauron can make it work this time with this Elven faction, we will see that. This will be the hour when we draw the swords together and 9th Feb, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream, hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Means a lot to me, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna have an early barracks coming up for uh, Sauron actually guys. Uh, all it takes is Solas to show me one to beat you bruh, what? Now they are actually, Sauron is trash talking his opponent. <laughs> you don't have Solas mind anyway, so I think Solas was kind of training uh, maybe uh, Sauron, who knows, who knows. On the other side we see two mills, Hall of the Kingsman into the third mill. I mean, the trash talk is real and I like this, this is kind of adding some, you know, flavor in, inside the, inside the, uh, you know, competition, I like it. <laughs> because remember, they used to play against each other all, already one time in this tournament, in the finals of the winner record it was, in the best of seven, in which it was Mr. Smog beating Sauron in 4-1. So he was actually kinda destroying Sauron in this series. But now we see completely another Sauron and we also see another Mr. Smog. It might be the case because he feels not very comfortable right now. But that's not gonna change the fact that right now Sauron is looking really strong. Uh, Crafty Catcher, thank you so much for the follow as well, appreciate that and welcome to the stream. Okay, so we have a bunch of Malone trees now. He's gonna start with the Lorian Warriors and actually moving to the left side. He will become, he will be able to move to this side unseen. Rallying Call is gonna be used immediately. I hope Smoke is not gonna do the same mistake. Don't tell me Smoke is gonna be doing the same mistakes. Oh, Smoke is doing the same mistake. And he did that also in the game number two. I am not happy about that. The build is going down and the mill is going down right after. Looks like Smoke is not learning about his mistakes, what he did in the game number two on the map Falls of Eisen. And yeah, I, I know, I, you know, kind of obvious what he's trying to do. He's trying to build a wall up, cancel, build a wall up, cancel, build a wall up, cancel. This way he can try to body block and kind of move the, you know, block, uh, block the movements from the enemy units. That makes sense to me. But sometimes they are able to burst you down just like that. And that was also the case in the game number two in the same series, like we are right now, guys. Uh, 350 command points available for elves, 350 command points available for Engma. And also the second mid is coming, going down. And you can't have a better start than this one, trust me guys. Mr. Smog is very behind now, lost the Builder, lost two mills right after, without being able to deal any counter damage just yet. And Sauron is shining bright like a diamond in this one. 
He's now going for the stable. He's gonna recruit some lancers next. Uh, to have some counter units to the Skundabad warriors, but also mainly to have some mobile units on the field, you know? Uh, Bundeswehr uh, 18. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Thank you, Shun. Okay. Uh, 400 command points, 350 command points, and a great start into the series. He's gonna be also able now to creep the Switzerland into the game number four. And again, Sauron is already leading the series 2 1, so winning this is gonna give him a huge advantage, guys. But this, this is not over yet, and also the game number two had a similar start to this one, and Mr. Smoke was still able to win. Wolf Riders coming up next from the Wolf Den. The White is gonna be secured by the Elven player Sauron. He's gonna also be able to get the money and just extend his lead. Oh, be careful. Nice timing, nice micro. Warchant is gonna be used now, kinda of offensively. Remember, Rallying Call is on cooldown still, because it was used at the beginning of the game on this Lorien Warriors. Beautiful trample, no wolf packs around though, and no wolf packs means there is not enough power to take down those pikemen just in time. Uh, Sauron is running for his life, he should be able to get away with the, with the army, and in the worst case scenario you can always build a well, and that's the power of the good factions in all battle for middle earth games, not only in Rise of the Witch King, that you have sustain even when you are level 1. So you can sustain with the Slorian arches, as they were able to survive. The Malone tree is getting demolished by Sauron in time, and that's the thing you wanna do. But Smog has no pikemen, guys, and that's gonna be a fierce situation now for these Lancers. They are going for a juicy and beautiful trample. But that might be a bad trample since they get slowed down like this. You wanna go for a... That's a nice counter damage, actually, because they are buffed. And you, you don't wanna ride in between of them. You know, if you do that, you're gonna lose quite a lot of movement speed, and that's gonna make you stuck in between the enemy units. Alright, can you take down this one? The answer is no. They have some full packs now finally on the field. They should not fight in a 1v2 situation against this Lancer store. They have to have heavy spike colors purchased. They are tank here, but it's not enough to deal with two Lancers at the same time. Smoke is kinda recovering a little bit. He's also gonna be able to creep this Goblin Lair at the bottom right side of the map, Ethan Mars. He's, he needs to try to actually defend his mills now for the next couple of minutes, because next attack will be from Sauron definitely, since he will now be the one who is gonna have the buff advantage on his in his fever. Warchan is on cooldown, it was used before, and it's not gonna be available any soon. And yeah, like mentioned before, the well is coming up for the sustain, and luckily Sauron was able to survive with many many units, look at this, one, two, three battalions, and he's gonna recover over time with them. Which is quite nice, so he doesn't have to invest much more money into making more units, which is quite efficient. Uh, on the other side, power point wise it's quite even, 450 command points against 400, the game is looking really even right now. Uh, we need to always um, consider the fact that Mr. Smog was the one who lost the builder early on. So at some, at some point Smog has to revive the builder or you know buy another builder from the fortress. Which is gonna cost him 500 resources. Quite expensive actually. Uh, investing that much money into a builder because of a mistake of yours. Okay the Malone tree is getting demolished by Sauron. He knows he can't keep it alive. And that's very important as well. Keep demolishing those buildings in time. This way your opponent is not gonna be able to get any experience points, but also no power points. And we have seen in this series a couple of times how important the power points are in the mid to late game. You know, the Sun Flare we have seen already one time, the Eagle Summon, the, the Cloud Break, they have such a big impact on the game. Uh, Krugens, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream, hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. We are currently casting the Grand Finals for the Good Against Evil Tournament for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King. You have at the top side of your screen the scoreboard, it's 2-1 now for the Elven player, uh, for the Elven player Sauron. And we are right now in the game number 4. And this is the best of 9 series. Delvin is available for the Angma player as well as Warchant. Rallying Call is also available for Sauron as well as the heal from the spellbook. 525 command points now. The builder from... Uh, oh, he's gonna lose another builder, right? Oh, that's bad. That's the second builder he's losing now in this game. Not a good sign, not a good sign at all. On the bright side, however, this Malone tree is gonna be taken down. Elven players actually getting caught here into the pikeman. Oh, the Felvind getting missed, actually. He was wasting the Felvind just like that. Now he has to disengage. I could see what he was trying to do. He was kind of predicting the movement from the Lancers and trying to use Felvind on them to actually suck them back in. But uh, Sauron was turning around and going the other way. That's why the Felvind missed just like that. Which is very unfortunate. 
Okay, 45 command points for elves. His command points kept. Can't make any more units right now. Until he gets some more Malon trees on the field. He's now going for another counter attack. This mill. Looks like Smoke is going to give it up. It's almost level 2. That's kind of bad if he loses that. But there is no way he can save this. The wolf packs are diving in. They are again one of the best, if not the best, counter to the pikemen. But they have to get into the back line. During all this time, the Elven player has also units into the top right side of the map. And he keeps up the pressure all the time from all sides at once. Uh, Shimana GB, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Appreciate that. We have now some Wildman of Thunderland, actually, guys, the Hillman. Coming from the inn, from the Engma player, uh, Mr. Smug. They were able to take down one of these uh, Malon trees with these torches. They are hitting very, very hard. And they have also the Pillage. They are outrunning these arches, by the way. They can now. They can take them down. And the Builder from Sauron, does he pay attention, though? Oh, he's paying attention, luckily. And he will be able to get away. But they might actually attack some of these Malon trees and steal money whenever they do. You can see plus one, plus one, plus one all the time. Smog was able, luckily, to keep this level 2 mill protected. We have 485 and barely any units around from the Alvin player. And the game is turning around just like that in favor of Mr. Smog. He is down to 385 command points now, has almost no units on the field, guys. On the other side, we have 350 command points for Mr. Smog, but he has way more units on the field right now. Remember, this building is also working like a barrack, so you can get some additional reinforcements by using the inn. And those Hillman units, in this case the Whiteman of Dunland, are also quite cost efficient units, they cost only 150 each, but even if you lose them, it's not a big deal. This goblin layer is going to be secured by the Engma player, Mr. Smug. Like This was really important to keep this level 2 mills protected. That's very important. 8 power points collected, he can always go for the Snowbind, which can be used defensively. But you can also use it offensively, I mean, that's something we barely see nowadays, I have not seen in the last year, that anyone using Snowbind offensively on the enemy building. Like, for example, if you do that, if you use it on the enemy barracks, for example, you won't be able to get any units on the on the field until the effect of the snowbind is gone. But on the on the on the downside, you are also not able to kill the barracks during this time. This community is blessing. Thank you, man. You are also now uh, officially apart from this community. So in this case, you are also blessing. Bundeswehr. Okay, Warchan is available for Mr. Smog as well as the Felvind. It looks like he's gonna creep this White Slayer, the last remaining White Slayer on the map, uh, Etamors. And the Troll Layer is still remaining on the field around the top left side. But that's it. All the other creeps are gone. Smog was also able to creep this Goblin, goblin Layer earlier. And he's gonna be able now to recruit some additional Hillmen from the second inn as well. And that's nice because if you have both of these buildings under your control, you can use two different pathways. pathways to keep up the pressure. 500 command points available for Engma and we have 535 command points available for the Elven player Sauron. He has a level almost 3 Malon 3 in the backside which is not protected right now. And if the Engma player manages to get in, you know, to get around this area and take it down, it would be actually huge. The builder is getting in safety. This Malon 3 is going down to the Wolf Axe. And Elven player is now looking for a counter attack. He has 9 power points collected and once he has 10 power points he can go for the or a mist which can debuff the enemy units and nullify the leadership they are getting currently from Baldur. Baldur is the only or the first hero we have seen in this hero, in this game so far. But that's gonna change now as Haldir is joining the battlefield. Orc summon, but that's the weakness of the orcs against lances. Felwyn is gonna be used. Arrow volley is gonna be chosen. Is Smok gonna be able to dodge the incoming damage? Does he even see the animation? The answer is no. And look at this arrow volley. Burst it down. Do you see that? How many units he was able to kill successfully with? Uh, arrow volley. I think there were just, you know, too much fiesta that Mr. Smog was not able to see the animation coming through. And that's why this arrow volley was hitting very hard and actually winning the fight. This would be a disaster fight for the Alvin player if this wouldn't be the case. This was the only reason why he was able to survive with the units and, and hide it especially. I did now running for his life. The horse archers are getting trampled down. Plus 10 every time you kill one of these because uh, Waldo is level 3 and he's, you know, nearby. He's almost level 5 as well. That's gonna give him the chance to summon more reinforcements on the field. And Smog is keeping the pressure on the right side of the map, which is the side of the Alvin player. And this makes him kinda untouchable right now. And again, Horse Archers are nice for fighting against units potentially, but they are not good when it comes to take down the enemy buildings. And so far, Smog is in a safe spot. 
8 power points collected already after the orc summon, Felwind and the Warjan. This is level 3, this is also level 3. Now we have 600 command points collected for Mr. Smokers. The wolves as a group and then the infantry units as a group as well. And only a little bit more experience needed until Walder gonna get the chance to summon more un units on the field. Which is always nice. And again, we have seen how impactful Hydir can be in the game number 2 on the map for Sufizen. So once he gets level 8, uh, that's gonna become scary for the Angmar player, Mr. Smog. And yeah, these games are lasting way longer, I mean, between Elves and Engma, than the games we have seen so far between Dwarves and uh, Engma, in which Sauron was pretty much dominating the fight all the time. But we have still many, many games to be done with. We have still many, many maps we will, be, we will get to see in the next games. And this is the game number four. So far, we have seen the map Etamors, Falls of Eisen. But we have still, you know, maps like Holy Edit. We have still maps like Erin Lair. So, still many, many maps left. Remember, each map will be seen only once in a series. So, there is no chance anymore that we will ever get to see the Falls of Eisen again in this Best of Nine series. There are some units recovering over time. Horse Arches are gonna be. I think they are not. They are not bad against those Wolf Packs, though. They're outranging them, obviously, and then they're gonna force them away. The Alvin player now going for a counter attack. Warchen is almost back up. On the other side, we have a uh, Rallying Coal and Heal almost back up as well. This mill is going down. Six power points collected, command points kept, by the way. The Alvin player once again. On the other side, the Engma player has actually 11 power points collected, guys. So he can, if he wants to, go for uh, the Frozen Net or the White Summon. And White Summon is going to be. Felwind White Summon can also be nice. So use now Felwind right after. There we go. Beautiful Felwind coming in from Mr. Smog, disabling all the units. The Whites in the meantime are taking care of these units. And what a great defense from Mr. Smog one more time. And the White Summon is leading to the Blight. So he might go for the Blight once he has 15 power points collected. Which is quite efficient. I mean, it depends on the situation, right? Sometimes it's better to go for the Giants, which is gonna lead from the Orc Summon. Because if you get the chance to win a big fight and you are able to push forward, the, the giant summon can literally win you the game. But if you have to defend yourself and if there is an enemy, massive enemy army you want to deal with first, the blight is your power point from the spellbook. Okay, there we go. Now, Waldo is level 5. Summon Hillman is unlocked. 5 power points collected, which can, if necessary, be invested into the Snowbind to keep one of these level, uh, level 3 mills alive. Uh, 600 command points available for Mr. Smug, and we have 545 command points available for Sauron, guys. Hydir on the other side is level 3. The Whites are diving into far too deep, and they're gonna be bursted down from these archers. They have leadership around this area and double well, so they have a lot of sustain and utility. And once Hydir is level 8 or 5, 5 is also gonna be a nice power spike because he will have leadership not only around this area but also when he's going for the attack. And Elven player can go still for the mist if he needs that with level with 10 to deny the leadership from Waldo and debuff the enemy units. We have now Morgomir on the field and I like Morgomir. I think he's pretty underrated. And once he's level 2, he would have to debuff, which is not nullifying the enemy leadership, true, but I think it's still nice. What is Waldo doing there actually? Oh, I think Sauron was not paying attention. There we go, that's the Hillman summon. We have one, uh, two bike men summon, as you can see. I mean, it's fine, because if you lose them, who cares? You didn't invest any money into them, right? And again, Waldo's uh, passive is coming in clutch. Every time you kill units, you get plus 5 from killing Lorien warriors. You get even more when you kill lancers, archers, and heroes. Okay. It's a bad fight, actually, for... Oh, 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 be careful with Glorfindel. He's lucky that those are only the Stralmaster Spearmen and not Hill Trolls. Because we have seen already in the last, in the in the second game, I mean, what the Hill Trolls can do against Glorfindel in a second. Beautiful trample, abusing the fact that there are no more pikemen left. Morgumi is now level 2, has the debuff available. And Waldo and Morgumi are gonna be able to survive. And yeah, the Elven player was also able to defend himself, which is good. A double barracks, a level 2 stable, that's it. No level 2 barracks just yet for the Mirkwoods, guys. We might need some Mirkwoods later on. If he wants to be able to win those extended fights. And once again, he's making the same mistake and actually recruiting some uh, horse arches instead, which I don't like that much. Arrow Volley is going to be available for the next fight. And Arrow Volley is a nice tool also in combination with the Cloud Break and in combination with the Golden Arrow, because it's going to guarantee your hit. If you don't use it in combination with the stun, 
uh, Mr. Smog might be able to dodge the incoming damage. For example, he's using now. Smog has the time he needs. Just, just dodge. Ooh, he didn't dodge. Okay. Smog was not paying attention. And look at this. How many wolves are gone. Just like that. Alright, Glorfindel side by side with Haldir, who's now level 4. 13 power points collected, 745 command points available actually for uh, Sauron. He's back in the business. He's pretty uh, in, a, in a good shape right now. I mean, I don't want to jinx it too much. Because we have seen already the game can turn around within a second. Now, that might be a mistake. Orc Summon will be used defensively. Felwind was used also to suck in these units. And again, uh, Waldo is paying off every single penny. Waldo is a similar hero to Azog from the Goblin Faction and to Eomir from the Man of the West Faction because those heroes, they offer you, offer you a passive uh, ability which gives you money every time you kill enemy buildings or units, which is very nice. Aldir has to be careful. Ingmar is now going for a counter attack. Riding Call is on. It's available actually. Okay, I take it back. Oh, 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 Glorfindel is getting bursted down. Bad positioning is down just like that. He was level 1. So no Blades of Purity was available to make him stronger and tankier. And Blight Summon, there it is. Sauron is not paying attention. He's taking damage over time. I don't like this Blight Summon that much. Because uh, ideally you want to use it with combination of the Felvent. 15 power points collected now by Sauron, guys, after the Arrow Volley. But he lost quite a lot. And now he has to deal with this many Whites. He's gonna go for the Miss now. Mist can lead later on into the Cloud Break, and he knows Cloud Break might be necessary if he wants to be able to survive, but he's not gonna use the Mist to debuff the enemy units. He has still some units for defense. The Wells are going down, the Statue is down, and more reinforcements are being summoned from the Summon Hillman ability from Waldo. The commitment now against one of the Barracks. He has one more left, so even if it, you know, if he loses that, it's not the end of the world. But if he loses the small on trees, it's bad, because that's gonna make him lose 100 command points, just like that. But it looks like he will be able to force his opponent to retreat by investing the mist as a defensive ability. One more beautiful trample is incoming from those horse archers. This barracks might be level 2 upgraded very soon once he has the money he needs. And Sauron is still in the game. 7 power points collected after the blinds. I mean, actually, when we take a look into the current command points or power points, sorry, sorry uh, Smoke is so much ahead, right? Smog already went for the 15 power points from the spellbook, so he can basically now save for the 25 already. And he's only less than 18 power points away from this massive power spike. Unlike the Alvin player Sauron, who has to first of all pick up 15. And he needs like 6 power points for that still. Morgomir is level 4. Level actually 10 is quite nice. Ruin can be very nice. And you have also the Dark Glory, which can be nice when you have some Black Numenorians or Dark Rangers on the field to give them actually some additional leadership. Because remember, um, you know, this can only work on these two unit types. So Morgomir and Nurby Dark Dunadine. That's it. Right? Okay, 10 power points. Almost 700 command points available for the Elven players. Bunch of horse archers on the field, guys. Two battalions when one of them is normal. He's looking for a trample. And Smog might need some more pikemen. I think, oh, the Felvin is being used to catch a couple of these units, but is there any follow-up? I don't think it is, right? He's gonna be able to kill a couple of these, but Felvin is being wasted just like that. And maybe heal trolls is the way to go, even though heal trolls, they are not getting trampled down. So, if, even if he tramples over them, they're not gonna take any damage. Maybe get some more of these pikemen on the field instead. Glorfindel is back in the business as well, almost level 2. Level 3 is gonna be a nice power spike for Glorfindel. Aldir is almost level 5, that's gonna unlock the leadership. Uh, he's now building some more buildings, like the second barracks for example, and even going for the barracks number 3 in order to be able to spam units all the time. Warchan is being used. Morgomir is level 5, that's gonna unlock the Morgul Blade. Morgul Blade can be used one against one of the heroes if he wants to, right? To disable them. Haldir is level 5 as well, he has the leadership unlocked. And unlike the leadership from Waldo, Haldir's leadership is not exclusively to one type of unit. It's working for every single nervy allied unit. Back and forth game, hard to tell what's gonna happen next. Uh, Haldir uh, should be fine. He's really close to the well, so I don't see him dying any soon in this situation. 15 power points collected now for Sauron. Again, I believe that uh, Klaus Break can be nice here. He's gonna summon more Hillmen with, uh, with Waldo. 
I did is running for his life. Plus 10, plus 10 for killing this many horse archers just like that. He's gonna find he's gonna go for the Eagle Summon, alright. Eagle Summon, but it's gonna be a defensive summon. Oh, it's gonna be offensive summon. Alright, I take it back. Snowbind might be needed. But he has not the power points he needs. But he's gonna go for the giant summon offensively, ladies and gentlemen. Now the eagles, they have to fly back. They have to kill this. The eagles are coming, as Peregrine Talk would like to say. There is no rebuild available for the Elven faction, unlike to the Men of the West and to the Dwarven faction. The giants are hitting very hard, and unlike ants, they are hitting very fast as well. The giants are gonna get targeted now by this. Uh, eagles, but they are still able to do the job before they go down and the fortress is gone and after this Sauron is demolishing everything and we have once again a even score guys. The score is 2-2 two, 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 and now we're gonna see the tiebreaker number 2. What was starting? Uh, it was I think the same situation. You know it doesn't matter what the starting faction was. They have played these matchups many many times in the finals of the in a bracket in which Mr. Smog was able to win 4-1. So it was one-sided back in the day, like a couple of days ago. And now Sauron is just exchanged, like he is a different player. Or maybe it's Mr. Smog, I can tell. Two mills are coming up for Mr. Smog guys, the Engma player at the bottom side. Against the blue Elven player Sauron at the top side with two Malon trees. Into the barracks. Alright, so pretty normal start, nothing too crazy. Normally in this matchup Sauron uh, was always getting the barracks early on the field. After, ma after one Molon tree only to recruit the Lorien warriors and he was making it work every single time. Do you guys remember these matchups in which he was every time able to kill the builder at the start of the game from Mr. Smog and also one up till two, mil two mils uh, but this time he's gonna go for something different, two uh, Molon trees instead. That's gonna delay his uh, delay his Lorien warriors a little bit. So two mils all of the Kingsmen into the, third, uh, into the third mil coming up for Mr. Smog now. Let's see what's gonna be his choice. And we also see every single time the Troll and Wolf Ten for the Wolf Max and Wolf Riders. Every single game. I mean, I think they didn't even change anything about the Engma faction that much. I don't even know if they buffed ever the Wolf Packs. But I can I can tell you guys, earlier in the other patches, Engma was known for going for multiple Hall of the Kingsmen first before the transition ever gonna be made into the Wolf Ten. But now we see Wolf Ten in every single game, just like that. When we draw swords together. Uh, Blood Wolf first, thank you so much for the follow. Well, where, where I'm from, I'm from, I'm living in Germany, but I was born and raised in Turkey. All right, the bikes are gonna be able to creep this white uh, work layer in the middle of the map. Dwarves are zero three, exactly. Dwarves are zero three so far. Should play. He should pick Engma too. I mean, then we need to change the name of the tournament from uh, "Good uh, Good versus Evil" to "Evil versus Evil." <laughs> okay. Oh, that's nice actually from the Engma player, right? That should be nice. Who's gonna get the money and the creep? Smoke should just try to get this one because if he doesn't, the archers they're gonna take care of these. Smart move here with the porcupine formation, trying to buy some time. And look at this. I mean, by the way, also the Gundabad warriors are a counter unit to the Spikemen. But they need much more time to kill them, unlike the wolf packs. The wolf packs, they are eating them alive. But that's a that's a bad that's a mistake in my opinion from Mr. Smug. Lost now two battalions, and he also lost the creep and the money. That's really unfortunate start. And he was not even able to kill the pikemen. They are level two, they're gonna recover over time. That's a really bad start. It was looking good, but I think he should be just taking the risk and go for a 50-50 play <clears throat> and try to burst down the, the rubble. To at least get the money if you don't if you miss the last hit on the lair. But he didn't do it and he lost both the lair and the money afterwards. Okay. So Wolf Ten, that it is, of course. Uh, for the Wolf Packs and Wolf Riders, like mentioned before. Rallying call is on cooldown and War Chain is on cooldown. Remember they were both using it here around this area. The Alvin player now is going for a counter-attack. And he will include in his army one archer, one Lorian warrior and one pikeman and that's all. And I think that's not enough. And Mr. Smog should be easily able to defend this. Look at this now. Wolf packs are diving in. They, are, they, didn't they didn't purchase this one. And I think this is the key to victory, right? Because imagine if they have this. I think that's a crazy amount of boost you get from the heavy spike colors. It makes it so much more tanky. And in this situation, the wolf packs died in a second. Just like that. 
Okay, looking for a chance to trample, but Sauron is paying attention and he's actually microing his army very, very well. And look at this micro from Sauron, it's on point, I like it very much. Always pikemen close to the archers and denying so much from Mr. Smog's Wolf Riders, just like that. I mean, this is the thing, you know, I think in every single matchup between Elves and Engma so far in this series, <clears throat> it was Sauron who was actually getting a great advantage early on, you know. Either he was able to kill the builder in the, in the mill, or in a situation like this, he was able to kill the units, get the creep, get the money. But the follow-up is always meh, you know, he was not able to actually extend his lead and punish, or mis punish Mr. Smog for falling behind early on. It's Holin Edit, the map's name. It's called Holin Edit. There are two Holins. One of them is um, normal Holin. This is Holin Edit, which is a little bit different in terms of creeps and the positioning. Massive Elven army guys in the middle of the map. They might easily contest this creep if they want to. They might even steal the creep if he can t somehow take down the Thralmaster. And Smoke's no Smoke knows that. He has to disengage now, run for his life. And that's gonna give another beautiful and free creep now, just like that, to Sauron. And just extend the lead, you know, just snowball, snowball, snowball. Play it patiently, play it slow. You don't have to rush things. And that's the heavy spike color upgrade now on this Wolfbanks. That's a really significant upgrade. It's gonna make them very tanky. It's not very cheap though, costs you 150, so you need to invest potentially 400 resources to make them really strong. 250 to recruit them, and 150 for the upgrade. Uh, 410 command points available for Sauron, he's now going for his stable and level 2 once again. And I, I don't like this that much. Let's be honest guys, in the games we have seen so far, what do you get? Do you guys really think that those units, the horse archers, were really effective and impactful? I don't think they were. No, I don't think they had like many... They had like little to zero impact on the game in my opinion. I don't like to see them that much. I mean, it's maybe me. I don't like them, it's maybe me, I don't know. But, you know, in compared to the Mirkwoods, they feel really bad. They, they feel really weak and really bad. I didn't like to see them that much. Sauron is not expanding very well. Yeah, I agree with that. He is not expanding very well. He's gonna be command points kept very soon. But he is also being able to keep the Malon trees protected. So there is a, you know, there is a thing. When you expand too much, you give just too, many, too much more targets for your, for your opening, you know? The more, the more Malon trees you have, the more targets Mr. Smog has to go for. So, if you expand slowly as you are getting more units on the field, you have then enough units to keep your Lamin Mills protected, the Malon trees protected. The builder from Mr. Smog has to be careful. He's maybe present around this side. Oh, he's not paying attention, and he's paying attention now, but it's too late. Builder is down. I think it's a bad fight for elves. It's a bad fight for elves. Fighting around the area like this is always bad. In my opinion, but let's see, maybe he can make it work. Extrovers are doing a nice job, nice flank here with the one battalion. The thing is, these pikes are very weak, you know. Unlike the pikes from the Alban faction, they can't even use the porcupine formation. That's their weakness. But Smog um, is gonna be able to force Sauron to retreat. Oh, level 2 will be able to survive. Nice one. Will be able to get away with the archers. The wolf pikes are getting killed by these horse archers. I mean, they gotta be good for something, I guess. Kill the Vani carrier? Oh, oh, he will be able to get away. Actually, very nice here from uh, Sauron. Just run away, keep running with this unit if you can. One of them has been taken down. No pikemen once again. And I think Smoke is making the same mistake in every single matchup we have seen this uh, else against Engma so far. He's too, too greedy, you know, he has not enough pikemen, doesn't actually give the respect to the enemy cavalry units as he should. And losing a bunch of units because of that reason. 575 command points available for elves and 775 command points available for Engma guys. 775. He was expanding at the bottom side as you can see and also at the top side. I mean there, there is nothing around this area so Smog can expand and also Sauron can expand. Sauron has not a really offensive Malone tree on the field so far and there is a tower coming up and I feel like towers are so effective against elves because they need so much time to take it down you know. Especially if you put some units around the tower. Uh, look, there's only one pikeman that can deal damage to the buildings. That's it, you know, that's it. 
Oh, that's a bad thing with the wolf packs. I don't like this. Kill the pikeman first, maybe. Tower is coming up. Beautiful trample. Now wolf riders can go for a trample because the pikemen are badly damaged. They can move around if they can. Beautiful trample. Tracky Rot WK just gifted one subs. What a pirate. Tracky my man. Thank you so much for the gifted sub to Auditor01. Thank you, Tracky. Thanks for the support, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you a lot for that. Means a lot to me. Eight power points collected now for the Engma player. Uh, okay, that's a Elvin Wood. I like this. That's gonna maintain the buff after Rallying Call, which was on cooldown by the time. And, you know, using it in the middle of the map, in the center of the map, is always nice. Like a truck, exactly. Witch King? Question mark? I don't see Witch King, right? No, there is no Witch King any soon. He keeps losing units and he will be forced to invest the money he has into reviving them all the time. So I don't see him getting the money he needs just yet for the Witch King, which is who's really expensive, right? Does he have extrovers inside? No, he doesn't. You know, you can always use your extrovers to put some, put them inside the tower. Uh, in this matchup, we have also not seen Mr. Smog going one time into the level 3 Hall of the Kingsmen in order to get this uh, Dark Rangers on the field so far. Not a single time in these three matches. Entmood is coming up and this situation is looking so nice for Sauron. Imagine Sauron winning this and actually extending his lead from 3-2 to 4-2. And the next matchup is going to be Dwarves against Engma. This, winning this, can actually give him so much. It can almost guarantee him the second best of 9 series, just like that, you know? 10 power points collected now by the Engma player. He might go for the Orc Summon and that's going to be also the kiss. And the horses are getting killed. Haldir is on the field, trying to kill this wolf packs, uh, wolf riders. Uh, level 5 is going to be eventually unlocked at some point. It, oh, he killed the Trailmaster. Now commitment. There is a Elven Wood, but if Smog can actually win this fight... Oh, that's a nice one. And that's going to hurt Smog, uh, That's gonna hurt the Elven player big time. Because he was building the Entmood right there. The horses, they won't be there in time. They're going to one-shot every Gundavert warrior just like that. You know, they have double buff here. The statue is going down. That's going to negate the first. Uh, the, you know, the leadership is gone pretty much at this point. Uh, let's see if Sauron can actually protect this Entmood, guys. Entmood is so tanky, by the way. 6,000 HP. Like, this is crazy. It's so hard to get destroyed. He's moving now from the top side. Smog was able to see the Entmood. He knows he has to deal with Ents very, very soon. And he was not able to, defend, you know, kill everything around this area. Even though he was fully committing. He was using the Warchant, he was using the Felwin, and even the Orc Summon. But he was not able to win this fight. And this game is looking so much better for Sauron so far. Let's see if he can kinda, you know, finish this game before Engma gets stronger and stronger. We shall see. I gift sub and now he makes 3 bits. I like my dreams come true. <laughs> no, he's not going for 3 bits. He's going for the normal end. He can't be because his command points kept. Nice one here from Mr. Smog. Killing this Malone tree is, is gonna deny him so much. And he will lose a lot of time. And he killed this though. The Trailmaster is being the target. If he killed the Trailmaster in time, he will, he will be able to defend. Now, look, do you see that? The Trailmaster, that's a double edged sword unit. And this Malone tree was really important, almost level 3. Close, but not close enough. Uh, 6 power points collected now. Aldir is gonna be just used for offensive purpose. He's gonna just kill units, hit and run all the time. Because he can afford it. Sauron is paying attention, he will get in safety. Getting a lot of damage actually here. Again, no extroverts inside the tower. No transition just yet into the level 2 or level 3 Hall of the Kingsman guys. And also no transition into the level 2 Wolf 10. So he has no snow throws any soon, no heal throws any soon, no black Numenorians any soon, and no Dark Rangers any soon as well. So. It's gonna be hard to win this extended fight, right? Because by the time this end is gonna be on the field, and the Elven player will be ready to move on. I think the Elven Wood is gonna be available. Yeah, it's almost back up anyway, right? So he will be having Elven Wood, which can be used if the Rallying Call falls off. So he have always the buff. And, you know, fighting against the Elven army when they are permanently buffed on the Elven Wood with this unit is gonna be hard. And you have to kill them first if you want to be able to reach to this end. Luckily, the Sauron is command points kept for a really long time, actually, guys. 
This ant is being recruited for the past three minutes. And he is not being able to get on the <laughs> on the battlefield just yet. Which is not bad for Mr. Smug. So he's kinda getting some more time to work with. Uh, almost 12 power points collected. He can still go for the miss. So with the full commitment, if he knows he can finish the game, he can always use Elven Wood and the Mist on top of that. He has leadership. I mean, he has buff from the Elven Wood, debuffing the enemy units, making your units stronger while the enemy units are weaker. Uh, this way you can actually end up protecting your end against the Engma army. On the other side, only 8 power points collected for Engma, so he can't go for the Frozen Land, he can't go for the Whites just yet. He's now moving from the downside. The wolf packs are getting chased down by this horses though. And also arches are hitting very very hard against them. Calvin is almost back up. Portion is available for Mr. Smog, and this game is looking really bad for Mr. Smog, I gotta admit. Really, really bad. Smog is not in a good situation right now. And there comes the first end. And the siege will begin very soon. First of all, he will kill this tower from a very safe distance. And when I say very, I mean very. Look at this. From downtown, you know? Uh, we need to see some more sorcerers. I feel like sorcerers are, sorcerers are terrible in this matchup, you know? They are very weak in defense, so... They're gonna die quite fast to these archers in seconds. He has to commit, he knows. He has to kill this end as soon as possible. Alvin Wood will be used once again. Alvin is being used. Will this be enough to buy the time you need to kill this? Oh uh oh Cloud Break! Trample them down now with this end. Come on, just run over them. What a Cloud Break, guys. What a beautiful trample following up next. The pikes are not in position. They were all front lining this area. And nice flank from this side. This stone is doing so much work for Sauron, actually, guys. Disabling so many units. Look at the positioning of this army and the way Mr. Smoke is forced to attack this area. This stone is dividing the army in two pieces and he can't, you know, he can't ignore this wall. Ni nice one here from Sauron. He was actually going from this side, you know, like this and attacking afterwards just like this, which was very efficient. But the end has been taken down. That's something. So that's gonna again buy some more time. But there comes another one just like that. 700 resources, nothing too crazy. Uh, Tribiot can also follow up next one. Next, because he is the daddy of Fangon Forest. And this time, uh, Orc Summon is gonna be available very soon. But Warchan is on cooldown and also Felwind is on cooldown. And there is still a massive Elven army with Hydir being really close to level 5 to unlock the leadership to make the archers even stronger. And Sauron was never leading that much in this matchup. He was never ahead this match, this match in this matchup. Going for a trample, Hydra is level 5. Unlock the leadership and Mist is gonna be used right after. And he knows he has to commit now. Orc Summon will be used on top of the enemy units. Lances are going for a trample. Okay. You have some Mirkwoods on the field as well. The Alvin player has so much money. So much money. And the Orcs, they get killed the second they get spawned. He will be able to kill this end one more time though, potentially. Right? Oh, it's gonna be close? No, actually he was able to survive. And that's why you make Treebeard instead. You know, Treebeard is so much more resistant. Oh, no Pikeman? Go for a trample? Nice micro here from Sauron. I got... I, he is playing so nice, this matchup. This game now. He has the momentum in his favor, you know. He keeps going all the time. And if Sauron wins this, the next game is gonna be Engma against Wars. Which is gonna favor Sauron from that what we have seen so far in this series. Maybe on Erwin Lane edit he can do something, I don't know what the map is gonna be. But the siege is gonna begin and I don't see Mr. Smog winning this game anymore. Let's take a look into the power points from Mr. Smog. He has enough power points for the White Summon. And never mind, he was already using White Summon. Blight, I mean, Blight is gonna be available very soon. Once he has 15. Blight can still turn this around, I believe, right? Blight, imagine Elven army, massive, going for the attack. You use Felwind and Blight in the combination. Kill all the enemy units. They're gonna turn into the whites, and you can use the whites right after to deal with the ants. At this stage of the game, Smok can't afford to go for the snowbind. He has to get blight if he wants to be able to win this fight. And for that reason, he has to fully commit now. Try to get the power points you need. Fully commit, even if you lose everything. Otherwise, you're gonna lose the game. 
War Chance, fully commits, man. I don't like this Blight at all. I mean, I don't like this Felvin at all. I would like to see it more in combination with the, with the Blight, but Blight is available, guys, and Blight is gonna be used, guys. The Ents are also taking damage over time. Look at the army of the Whites spawning just like that, and Sauron is forced to disengage. He has to run for his life. The weak armor from this Midwoods, they're not gonna be able to survive. The true army of the dead. Look at this. <laughs> Alright, and Smog was able to defend himself. But Blight has such a long cooldown. It, that means if he can save this end, or if he can save this outpost with double buff, stay tuned on the backside. Well, double well for the sustain. Aldir is also level 5, has leadership unlocked. And in order to win this now, or to turn this game around, Smog has to kill this end mood, which again is easier said than done. Because it is one of the tankiest buildings in the game. 6,000 HP, guys. 6,000 HP. And one of the ants was also able to survive. Okay. Was he using arrow volley for that? Yes, he was using arrow volley. But Smog was this time able to dodge. The wells are going down. That's gonna cut down, you know, the sustain from the Alvin play a little bit. Again, you will need ages to destroy that. And Smog knows that. He's gonna be... Oh, kind of retreating for now. And Sauron has still one end on the field, so he can keep sieging once again. 925 command points available for the Angmar player. Look at this, he's expanding very nicely at the bottom side. Same also at the top side. He has a lot of money actually, guys. What? <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden Sauron stopped fighting for the map control. He's kinda tunnel vision focusing now on his ends, and he wanna you know, win this game as soon as possible. But map control is everything, and if Engma player gets so much money, he has to sustain in his economy to keep more, to keep making more units. Snow trolls, you know, eventually some ranges at some point of the game. Nice trample here, and look at this, he's losing so much now, I don't know what Sauron is doing. I don't know what he's doing. He's trolling now his lead once again. And the Mirik Fools, you know, you lose 800 almost every time you lose them. Look at the snow trolls, they're gonna take care of this end now. You lose 700 every time you lose an end. So he loses so much money. And uh, Mrs. Mock is saying, I am not defeated until I'm defeated. It's a massive army, and I don't know what's happening. I'm kind of confused. Sauron had such a big lead, but if I take a look into the minimap now, the Angma player was expanding extremely well. Has mills everywhere, has almost full command points, guys. Just like the Elven player, but Elven player keeps losing really strong units, and they have to, you know, he has to invest money. He's gonna now go, finally go for tribute. He knows he's more resistant against units, against, uh, you know, snow trolls, against extrovers. The scheme is not over yet. And yeah, next fight, Klaus Break is gonna be available, guys. Klaus Break is nice. You can actually make him win the fight easily by stunning the enemy units. Uh, Rabanats, nine, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Appreciate that. Massive Angma army, but look at this Cloud Break now. White summon. The Whites are not getting stunned, by the way, from the Cloud Break, guys. They don't care. The mill is going down. Double ends. Oh! <laughs> Alright, against the units this time. The Whites are gone, but the stun of the Cloud Break is gone as well. I did this level 8. Golden Arrow next. Use Golden Arrow. And look at the stun again. Look at the stun. Golden arrow. Bam. And once again, they are stunned. Perma stun. <laughs> look at this. They can't move. <laughs> All right. Orc summon now being used offensively. Uh, no, it's the Hillman summon from Waldo. Uh, Alvin Wood is being used now. The ants are going down, but we have now the daddy of the ants on the field cast. Pretty strong hero. Boom. Beautiful hit. A fine hit, as Tribit would like to say. The mill, I mean, finally Sauron reacts and he's like, he's like, okay, something has to be wrong, right? This Angma player is getting way too much money and he's finally taking a look into the minimap or into the map control and he's finally able to see all these mills from Mr. Smog. But Tribit is now on the field, guys. The siege will continue and the wolf den is going down first. Rabonats, first of all, thanks for the follow once again and now with the prime sub, you are crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support, means a lot to me. Thanks for subbing, thanks for following the channel, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Means a lot to me. Eagle Summon will be now used from the Alan player. And this game is not over yet. I feel like Elsie can still do it, right? 
in order to kind of delay this, I feel like the three bit has to be taken down, but he's gonna go for trample now and one shot everything just like that. And the smog has not enough units on the field to kill Treebeard in time. And he's gonna just keep sieging now this level 3 mill. Smog is going for a counter attack. He was able to kill one of the builders from Sauron, which is not bad. Waldo is able to survive. The eagles are still flying around. And this might be GG now. I mean, 25 power points almost collected, though. So. <laughs> That's so. So, such a close game, but losing the wolf then, level 2, and not being able to kill the ants in time, I don't know, Smog could be playing that a little bit better, I feel like he was making too many mistakes early on mid game, Sauron on the other side was really focused, he wanted to win this matchup for the first time in this series, he lost this matchup every single time against Mr. Smog, that's why he lost two games, those two games he was losing was the same matchup else against Ingmar. But I think, that, I think that's going to be the first time he will be able to win. But who knows, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we're going to see another first time in the next game when Smok is going to play Dwarves. Because Smok lost also every time he was playing Dwarves against Ingmar. But if Sauron can do it, maybe Smok can do it as well. Who knows? He doesn't have the power points he needs for the 25. He doesn't have the power points he needs for the 25, guys. I mean, this is not going to change too much. It's going to be able to defend you now, but I think he's down. Look at his command points. He's down to 425 command points because Sauron was finally harassing the map at the bottom left side, but also at the top right side of the map. Smok is just trying to get the power points he needs. That's what he's trying to do now. And he's going to be able to do that. 25 power points unlocked. He knows this game is over anyway, right? The siege has begun on the fortress. He has the... Oh, he has this thingy. On the fortress. All right, all right. I see you. I see you. Okay. Summon Hillman. Oh, this pikemen are bursting down this end in no time. And here's the uh, here's the avalanche. And here's also this one, which is something similar, right? It's like a like a Gorgoroth's fire fireball from the Moro faction, but it's the winter edition. Pretty much. All right. Is he gonna use it? What is the range of this one? That's uh, that's what I wanna know. I think you can easily hit this area, right? I don't know if you can actually hit this area. Not sure about the range. Smok is still playing the game. He's not saying GG just yet. He has still... I mean, he has barely any units on the field. That's the problem. I think also Walder died, right? Yeah, Walder died. I don't see him on the field anymore. And look at this. And sieging from this side. Oh, 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 oh. Boom. Ah, not even close. Three minutes like a fine hit, but it's not enough. <laughs> I'm not a normal ant. I am the daddy of the ants. You don't kill me that easily. Alright. He's gonna use this one before he goes down, right? There we go. Just so you can see it, guys. For the show. For the entertainment. Avalanche has been used. Don't be asked. He's saying. Trash talk is real. Smoke knows. It's GG. There is no way he can turn this game around at this point of the game. And that's gonna give Sauron a huge advantage. Because the next game... The next, the next matchup is going to be Engma against Dwarves. But again, even if Sauron wins the upcoming game, even if he wins this best of 9 series, this is just going to reset the bracket, guys. And they have to, I mean, Sauron has to win two, not two times. The flat is being used. And that's it. That's it. At the top left side, we have the blue Engma player Sauron. Against the orange Dwarven player, Mr. Smog at the bottom right side. Now everything is working perfectly fine. And that's the that might be the first time in which Mr. Smog can win this matchup once. So far, he didn't manage to even get to the mid to lead game. He was being defeated every single time when they played this matchup within 10 minutes. Alright? So let's see if we can make a change. Maybe Demolisher is the way to go. We have seen this being actually very successful against Ingmar. Oh, but look, that's what I mean. Try something different. It doesn't have to be the same thing over and over again. And that's something different already. Watch work start, Kappa. <laughs> Let's see if this is gonna work out for the Engma, uh, for the Dwarven player. Uh, two mills into the Hall of the Kingsmen, into the third mill coming up for uh, Sauron. Ingmar, Ingmar, Ingmar. On the other side. And we will have some extroverts on the field, guys. Extroverts, different. Let's see. Units we don't very often see. 
And same goes by the way to the Man of Zeal. I mean, units we barely see. Most of the time, uh, dwarves they stick up with the swordsman pikeman combination like guardians and pikemen. And eventually, they're also gonna get some, uh, say it, you know, some uh, battle wagons later on on the field. But they most of the time skip the extra overs or they skip this building entirely. Like it doesn't exist, you know, archery range. Against goblins, we see that from time to time with the extra overs, but again, in this matchup, that's the first time I see this. So two mills, two mine shafts into the archer range, into the Hall of Warriors next. And that's gonna give him the chance to finally be able to spam some units on the field. And maybe play a little bit more defensively. That's what I mean. Like, play a little bit more defensively. Maybe that's the way to go. Because Sauron is doing a nice job. Look, he's already scouting the bottom side with the builder. He's checking this side with the second builder. He's now moving from this side with the Kundabad warriors. So he knows what you are trying to do and that's why he you need to mind game your opponent sometimes you know sometimes you need to make him think that you are doing something but if you do, you know like but you don't actually do it but the mind shot has been taken down Vorten has been used for that uh, he might be even able to steal the money from the creep potentially he's now being able to see this extra over scans during all this time uh, Sauron is also going to be able to get this work layer with the pikemen they are level 2 now the money is secured as well Mill is being built up now at the bottom right side offensively. But this is gonna give him some vision control, right? And vision control is very important against dwarves. You wanna see something. And that's maybe the reason why this building, the signal fires, you know, at the bottom left side, but also at the top right side, can be really nice for Engma. This way you can scout a really large area and you get to see all the possible mineshafts left and right. And there are the Wolf Riders. Pikeman! Oh, not in time! And not hold down stands, by the way, from Mr. Smoke in time either, so he has to be careful. They are all alive still, which is not bad, but they are quite slow. That means Smoke has to eventually build a well for the sustain. So Smineshop is going down next, and yeah, doesn't look that great for Mr. Smoke so far. Maybe we can turn this around. The Wolf Riders are actually being able to trample down those extra wells all the time. And during all this time, he's also being able to harass from the front side. The only good thing for Mr. Smok is that he was able to get the creep, but so was also the Engma player. And look at this, guys. He has units everywhere, and I like this playstyle from the Engma player Sauron so much. Like, he is on spot, he's scouting, and that's how you want to play against dwarves as Engma. There are some pikemen from Sauron on the field, and this time, at least Smok has some units for defense. Yes, many of them are quite badly damaged. Look at this HP from, for example, this... Extra overs, as you can see, they are pretty much one hit away from getting killed. But still, he has some units for defense. But in order to deal with the Wolf Riders, he also has to get some more pikemen on the field. Very important. And the good thing about the Extra overs, and I feel like they are very underrated, is the fact that they deal damage also to buildings, right? Unlike the normal archers. Oh, the builder has been killed. And Smoke is also kinda unlucky with his builders nowadays. Like, he is losing builder in every single game, pretty much. Got a delay on the stream, like 45 seconds. Um, Betis, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that. And welcome to the stream. Alright, big push is incoming now from Mr. Smok. Uh, there are some units, he can always turn into, into some more units, the Strand Master units. Now he will have all of a sudden 4 battalions as you can see, and he's gonna he's choose to turn every single one of them besides one into the extra overs. It's a massive army though, let's see how much damage Mr. Smog will be able to deal. Wolf Riders are not many of them on the field, and it feels like Sauron is not ready for defending such an attack. And losing this matchup, by the way, can turn everything around in favor of Mr. Smog, guys. Because losing this for Sauron would mean that the next matchup is gonna be Elves against Engma, this time Engma for Mr. Smog. And then for the final game, if Mr. Smog wins that, of course, he would spin the wheel one more time. So let's see. This was a, this is a nice attack, I like this. Warchan is available from Sauron, by the way. And that's the power of the extra overs. They deal so much more damage than archers to the buildings. The only problem here for Mr. Smog is that he is not expanding very nicely. Like, he has not a single offensive mineshaft. He has nothing that, can, that he can use for escaping with this army, you know? 
And again, in this kind of situations, it's really unfortunate, but the Dwarven army is so immobile. And the buff is gone now, just like that. Buffed army against non-buffed army and running away is not an option for Dwarves. Builders to be careful from Mr. Smog. Remember, he already lost one of the builders earlier around this side. This fight continues, but it's a buffed army against non-buffed army. And it's a, it's around the area from the Engma player, right? He's gonna get some more reinforcements on the field just in a couple of seconds. And he will be able to outnumber his opponent big time. Smog has to try to protect this mineshaft if he can. There is not a single offensive mineshaft again, like mentioned before. So he cannot escape or he cannot even bring any reinforcements to this area. He has one now coming up from the bottom right side, but that's it. Oh, the snow throws! Oh, beautiful one here from Sauron. Nice timing. This mineshaft has been taken down as well. Sauron is not paying attention and he's running it down with one of the wolf riders. Nice one here from Mr. Smog. He needs, you know, Sauron shouldn't make mistakes like this too many times. Okay, this mill is going to be taken down by these Extrovers on the backside, but they have no protection. That means the Snow Trolls can always trample them down in a second, you know? But it's going to go to, it's going to go down regardless. Okay, there we go. It's down. There is a mineshaft, I'm assuming, around this side, yeah? But that's it. Around the top right side, we have not a single mineshaft up on the field from Mr. Smug. So expanding is quite difficult against Sauron because he's checking all the, all the area pretty much 24-7. So Mr. Smog, the Dwarven player at the bottom right side, has right now 575 command points available. 4 power points collected after the heal and rallying call. On the other side, we have 8 power points collected for Sauron. He has 525 command points available. Actually, this game... This is the first game in which Dwarves are not in a horrible situation. Like, imagine... I mean, remember the other 3 games we have seen so far in this, in this matchup between these 2 players. It was super one-sided. And it was not even close. Like, at no point of the game, <laughs> Mr. Smog was able to reach to the, uh, reach to the mills from uh, Sauron. Unlike in this game, in which he was finally able to kill one of these mills. Two of these mills, at least. Alright. We have King Brand on the field, I like it. I'm starving. We ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days. Yeah. Why can't we have some meat? Thank you, Mr. Smog, because you make this game live with a lot of desire. I mean, Mr. Smog can't read your message. <laughs> He's one of the players. But thank you for being here. I t thank you in name of the Beyond Standards community. <laughs> and you are here in the name of the French community. Bonjour. <laughs> You have no power here. Go be smug. I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Smog now, guys. I'm from Ukraine. Actually, um, yeah, so, uh, Mr. Smog is doing a nice job now. I like the fact that he was finally changing something, you know? Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! This be the hour when we draw the swords together. Uh, Sorry, you guys have really difficult names for me to pronounce. But anyways, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream. Hope you guys gonna enjoy your stay. Appreciate that. It means a lot to me, guys. Thank you for being here in this beautiful Sunday evening. Uh oh, uh oh. There comes the army from the Engma player. Massive orc army, but there is nothing to defend. One extra war all alone. This is not gonna make it. And he's gonna, now gonna be forced to make some extra overs. Finally, Mr. Smog was doing a nice job, but that's a very surprising attack. And there comes the Orc Summon. Look, all of a sudden, Sauron has like five, eight battalions of Orcs around this area. This is crazy, right? Into the War Chant. That's a lot, guys. A lot. And the Mineshaft level 2 is going down. Smog is not in position with the army, and he has to build a Mineshaft now defensively. I mean, offensively to use it actually to get back around this side. He was using Rebuild, if I'm not mistaken, yes, to delay a little bit. This way he can use now the Mineshaft to get some units on the field. The Oryx are still... There are many Oryx. These are not doing anything. Uh, if you are using aggressive stands like this, they are always going to automatically attack the enemy units, but not enemy buildings. So you need to still always right-click on the Mineshaft yourself. 
Actually, um, Smoke was able to kinda defend this, but for that he was forced to use Rallying Call and he was forced to use Revealed. Which is a very well done job once again from Sauron. Smoke is going, going now for a counter attack. We have 575 command points available for Mr. Smoke, guys. On the other side, Sauron has 9 power points collected after the Orc Summon and the War Chant. He didn't go for the Fell in this game. Heal is being used now and he's gonna commit to one of the starting mills from his, from Sauron. He has enough power points for the for, for the Snowbind if he needs to, to keep this mill protected, but he is choosing to not use it. He's gonna give up this level 3 mill, unfortunately. I think going for Snowbind in those kind of situations is a nice thing. Especially when it comes to, you know, save one of your important mills. But I'm assuming he's either gonna go for the Orc Summon, he's going for the Felwind anyway, right? He's gonna use Felwind now. There are some units from uh, Sauron doing nothing around the top right side. Enjoying the weekend like we do. Enjoying this beautiful Sunday evening like we do. Where is King Brand when we need him? Uh, there he is, guys. He is level almost 2. Still not level 2, though. He's now on the field for a long time. The ultimate army worthy of Moro. We have Waldo on the field, guys. Almost level 3 now. 500 command points available for Engma. And 575 command points available for Mr. Smog. This is one of the games. This is the only game. This is the first game in which Smog. He's not getting defeated in 10 minutes. He's using Dwarven uh, the Witches. Is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means He's using Dwarven Witches now on this mineshaft, as you can see. To get some more money. Uh, that's something like industry, right? It's gonna boost the money from Mr. Smoke big time. Archer range to level 1. No battle wagon transition. Uh, no heroes beside King Brand. He keeps spamming extra overs all the time in combination with the pikemen. Okay. And Waldo is now level 3. That means money, money, money every time him, you know, he or the units around him are killing enemy units. But Smok is doing a much better job in this one. And he has potentially a great chance to win this matchup as well. Okay. Waldo is moving now from the river around this side. The Elven player will be able to, uh, the Dwarven player will be able to see that coming now. There's some mineshaft in the middle of the river. Uh, there is a Dwarven army with the Rallying Cult potentially. No summon. Remember, he was going for the Dwarven Riches, not for the Hobbit Allies summon. Dwarven Riches is nice if you can keep this mineshaft protected, which is the most important thing, right? It's like industry, pretty much. The mill has been get has got you know demolished by Sauron himself. He will be able to destroy this mineshaft. There are some mineshafts finally being up being built offensively from Mr. Smug. And he will also be able to reach this mill in the backside. And 925 command points available for Mr. Smoke, guys. Against 400 only. And this game is looking nice for Smokey. Maybe this is the way to go. Archer range into the extra world spam. Play a little bit more defensively early on. And play much more aggressively later on. Nice defense. He will be able to keep this mineshaft protected. Which is level 1 only. Engma is having some wolf packs on the field at the bottom right side. As well as some extra worlds. Air level 4, by the way. Almost level 5, which is the max rank in Rise of the Witch King for normal units. King Brand is still level 1, I can't believe it. He's gonna finally be level 2. This is unbelievable, kinda, right? He was on the field for like 5 minutes and he was still level 1. Waldo, level almost 4. Getting money, money, money. Look at this plus 3 every time one of the extra worlds dies when he's close to them. Which doesn't sound too crazy, but you know. It's gonna be about the quantity in this case and not about the quality of the money. You're gonna get money 24-7, so plus 6 for killing the Guardians. And the money you, you get is pretty much depending on the unit you are killing. Oh, has to be careful. King Brand. Oh, nice Felvin to suck him in back in. And King Brand is going down just like that. Well done from Sauron one more time. And Smog is making a mistake, losing the army and also his hero just like that. We have still, you know, full command points for Mr. Smog, guys. He's expanding. Look at the minimap at the bottom right side of your, at the bottom left side of your screen. Look how many mineshafts he has around this side. Expanding quite nicely. I like it. Waldo is almost level 5. That's gonna unlock the chance for him to summon more reinforcements with the summon healman ability. Extra over spam for the win. No battle wagon transition yet. But the Dwarven Riches on this level 3 mineshaft is actually helping Mr. Smog quite a lot. He has to also get Brand back in the business. Brand, I feel like, is a nice hero in this matchup. With the slam shot. Uh, extra overs all over the place. They are also dealing a nice damage actually to the wolf packs, as you can see. 
Oh, they are getting trampled down by the Wolf Riders, so unfortunately. The rebuild is available for Mr. Smog to keep one of the most important buildings alive. And that's, in this case, definitely this Mineshaft level 3, guys. But he has barely any units around. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's going for a big hero. Maybe Gimli, Gloin. Gloin can be also nice, by the way. And there comes finally the Forge Works, guys. That's what I was waiting for all game long. And I like this because I feel like Battle Wagons are still a nice unit to recruit in this matchup. Because uh, the leadership you can get from the Battle Wagons is gonna be active permanently. Engma, oh, oh, Orc Summon, Commitment, Rebuild is available, guys, remember? He's gonna also use the Frozen Land to get, to get leadership. But Rebuild is gonna be used definitely on this one. Oh, nice shots. Nice shots with the Oil Bottle shot. He will be able to save that. That's a nice one from Mr. Smog. He was able to keep this mineshaft protected against the Orc Summon in the Frozen Net. That's very, really nice. Like, he was committing fully against this one, right? But Smog was able to defend with the Oil Bottle shot from this catapult of the Dwarven faction. Pretty good. But in the meantime, the map is turning more and more into the blue. Uh, look at... Look at... 1. Thank you so much for the follow. And also... Uh, Ilka... Ilka Nerden, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy your stay. Alright, Slam Shot was used from King Brand one more time. He's back in the business. And level 4 is gonna give him the chance to train archers. I don't know if this actually works on extroverts or not. I'm not sure. Oh, we have Gloin on the field. There we go. You know what could be nice in this matchup? I mean, maybe King Dean is the way to go, you know? King Dean is nice. Like, King Dean is underrated. I would love to see him. Yeah, the fear resistant, the stubborn pride is useless against Engma, but the mighty rage can be very nice. The, the, the leadership of level 1 is always nice. And then the level 10, uh, you know, he's tanky hero. But Gloin is much more aggressive hero, of course. He's like a siege machine himself. Look at this picture. He looks mad to me. With the shake foundation, he can end up one-shotting one of the buildings in no time. Two heroes against only one. The only hero uh, Engma player has on the field is Waldo. Who's actually killing all these guardians around this side? It's now level six. Uh, Smog has to get some battle wagons on the field finally, but he di I didn't. Oh, 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 oh! He's going for the level three guys. No battle wagons. He wanna get the uh, uh, Mithril Mail purchase, I believe, from the Armory level three. I would still like to see a battle wagon or two. <laughs> Tracky for the gifted sub to Irvi, my man. Tracky going crazy nowadays. Thank you so much for the spot and for the gift is up. Appreciate that. And enjoy your badge, enjoy the emotes, Erby. WK gifted Erby 3 a subscription. What a monster. Trucky Rot WK What a monster. It's so funny when she's saying what a monster. <laughs> they <laughs> the, have the girly. Two gift subs in the channel. And they have given two gift subs in the channel. Thank you so much, Trucky. One more time. Second gifted sub today. Appreciate that. Alright, Waldo is level 6. Uh, this is level 1 still, but Slam is still available with level 1. Slam is pretty similar uh, to the Slam shot from... Oh, 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 the builder is going to be able to get in safety, but... He, oh, oh, he's losing the money from the mine shop as it's getting sniped down. And once again, the builder is not going to make it home tonight to his family. Level 4, King Brand now. Level 7 is going to unlock the Beast Slay Arrow, which I believe is not very effective. It can be effective against a potential Giant Summon. From the Dwarven player. Look, the power points are rising. That's a Man of the Hill summon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Man of the Hill here, they are not like the Ranger summon. I mean, situationally, the, situationally, the Ranger summon from the Man of the West faction can be better because they have the level 2 long shot, right? But these units are also able to deal massive damage to the buildings because they have fire, unlike the Rangers from the Man of the West faction. I like them. 15 power points collected now for uh, Engma. That means he has enough power points to go for the Giant summon. He has enough power points to also go for the Blight, which can be used defensively, right? But I'm assuming he's gonna go for the, for the you know, Giant Summon. When I commit now against the Fortress, I can feel it. But it's kinda a risky thing against Dwarves, because he has Rebuild, right? Now, Smoke has to kinda smell it coming. Like, he has to smell it coming, because if he uses Rebuild anywhere else now, at this stage of the game, the commitment with the Giant Summon against the Fortress can be game-ending, guys, just like that. Because regardless how much power points or command points he has, 
losing the fortress is such a big disadvantage, you know? It's really hard to come back from. I have barely, I mean, I have rarely seen games in which the player who lost the fortress was able to win in long terms. Trucky gifting like a truck. <laughs> exactly. Alright, there comes the white summon. And also the frozen land to slow down the enemy units. And the trample now is incoming as well. Mithril mail purchase, guys, by the way. From the level 3. The trample is incoming. They are not dying that fast anymore. They are committing now against the level 3 mill. Can they take it down? If they can, that's a really nice thing from Mr. Smog. Because what pretty much happened is... Uh, in order to keep this mill protected, uh, you know, Engma player went actually for the Frozen Lands usage and also for the White Alliance summon. And he still lost the level 3 mill. That's actually massive. Very well done here from Mr. Smug. And he chooses to go for the for the Blight summon. So no giants any soon. With that also no threat actually to take down the fortress from Mr. Smog any soon. Blight can be also nice uh, to defend one attack and to kill the enemy units. But it's not gonna make you... It's not gonna win you the game, right? I can't believe that. That's the first time this matchup in which Smok is doing a nice job. I like it. Sounds like Pride of the Dwarves. Exactly, it is the Pride of the Dwarves, Nikki. Alright. Waldo is still very strong, level almost 7. Might actually use the Blight here. Let's see if he's gonna do it for, go for it. There is an Engma army at the bottom right side with, with uh, Dark Ranger and two Snow Trolls, guys. Uh, he didn't go for the Snowbind at all. I think Snowbind is not a bad choice for Engma as well. And Gloin is level 2 now. Level 4 again is gonna be massive. Crazy power spike for the Daddy of Gimli. Snow Trolls are going in now for the attack. Dwarven Riches is coming in clutch for Mr. Smog all the time, by the way, guys. Jayla, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. And welcome to the stream. Means a lot to me, Jayla. Glad to have you here. Alright, Snow Trolls committing. What you can potentially do is also build a wall here, right? Uh, Viola1933, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. And welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Grand Finals for the Good Against Evil Tournament. For BFME 2, The Rise of the Witch King. We have so many viewers, guys. You guys are awesome. And, you know, seeing the seeing that so many people are still interested in BFME content makes me kind of really happy and proud at the same time. So thank you for spending your time in this beautiful Sunday evening here with us. To everyone who is typing and to everyone who is just watching the stream, thank you, guys. Uh, from Germany to your home. Black Numenorians on the field. And Dark Rangers. I think the build is gonna be taken down right after. The mineshaft is down, the build is down. I think that's the third or fourth time Mr. Smog losing a builder. King Brand is level 5. And there comes the Orc Summon, actually. Oh, Rangers are hiding around this side. Oh, oh King Brand. Slam before he die. Oh, slam before he dies. Okay. Orc Summon. You know, you can. Oh, the Blight Summon. At the bottom right side. Nice, Felvin. Delete Felvin, but it was, a, it was a smart one. Keep the units on top of your Blight as long as possible. And those are units with the Rallying Cold Buff and the Mithril Mill. And look, when they stay on the Blight, they still die. And very smart move here from Sauron, guys. This was a game-changing move. He killed everything, even though the Blight, uh, the Rallying Cold Buff was used on top of the enemy, on top of the units from Mr. Smog. And Mr. Smog is now down to 200 command points only from 825 possible command points he can, you know, use to get. I like Undermine here. Undermine is nice against those big Kundabite warriors, for example, or against the weak units like Extrovers because you can end up one-shotting them all, all the time. Slam is being used from Gloin. He's angry. And what could potentially happen, listen to me, guys, is I, what I would love to see is a level 2 of warriors into the Sea Chambers. You make some Guardians with the Sea Chamber upgrade with Mithril Mails with their tank here. Then you go for a sneaky attack, you use Undermine right there and commit against the Fortress. I don't understand why people are not doing that, because the damage output from these Guardians with the Sea Chambers is just insane. They can take down this Fortress in no time. Of course, now you will tell, of course, but Engma player can use Snowbind again, still. Like, if he uses Snowbind, you can... Now he's using Snowbind on this one, for example. It's gonna be on a huge cooldown, right? 
So now you can play around that. No snowbind means no way of saving the fortress. There is no defense around this side. And your guardians with the mithril mail, they're gonna be also quite tanky. It also gets this Benakiri upgrade, so you can use charge attack on them, you know? You have many, many different options, but the map is turning now fully blue to me. Look at this map, guys. Hauron is now uh, 850 command points, massive power points, 10 power points collected after the Blight, Whites, Frozen Land, Orc Summon, Felwind, Snowbind, and the Warchant. And great resources. Only high tier units, pretty much. We have, you know, Snow Trolls, the best Kev from the Engma faction. We have Hill Trolls, the best Pikemen from the Engma faction. We have Rangers, the best Archers from the Engma faction. On the other side, uh, you know, Smoke is kind of sticking up with tier 1 units, like Extrovers and Pikemen. That's it. No Battle Wagons, no Men of the Hill, no Zealots, no impactful heroes like Gimli, King Zane. And the ranges are very strong. They have now leadership from the frozen lands. Look at the minimap. Everything is blue, pretty much. And also upgrades purchased now on these. Uh, no, actually not. But he might go for the upgrades as well from the siege works. Level two now. Level three is going to be necessary to be able to purchase the heavy armor. All right, nice one here. The thing is that I like the I like the idea behind Mr. Smog's move that he wants to get upgrades on his units, but he's getting out spammed so so big time, you know, that he has. Like way less units on the field and upgrades in Rise of the Witch King, they are not very effective. I mean, they are not bad by all means, but they are not like effect as effective as in BFME 1. In BFME 1, for example, one upgraded unit can actually take like five unupgraded units down in a second. But the damage boost you get in Rise of the Witch King from the upgrades like Heavy Armor or Forge Blades is not that effective. Okay, Smok is in a turtle situation now. He has only this area left. Uh, I mean, Dwarven Riches is still helpful with the level 3 mineshaft, giving him so much money. Belvin has been used. Who suck in King Brand once again. Is he ability? Yeah, heal is gonna be used. Look at this damage from this black. What? They are bursting him down in a second, actually. And he's quite slow. Running for his life now. Uh, Halaros132. One, one, Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Glowing level 4. Couldn't get the chance to use the, to use the Shake Foundation just yet. And also Gannikus2119. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened. Smog was in a really, really good spot. But all of a sudden he kinda throw his entire lead. Slam shot. Nice one. He needs to run for his life from the Rangers. There is a mineshaft he can use to enter. Baldur is chasing him down, hunting him down. And the Dwarven heroes are so slow. I heard the White Summon. Oh, he's gonna use them at the bottom right side of uh, defensively. To deal with the Man of Deal. The Barbed Arrow Shot, the Black Arrows I mean. Can one shot this White by the way, I didn't even know that. King Brand was luckily able to survive. And there is also King Gloin. Uh, the build has been taken down and the Shake Foundation was used against the Siege Warriors. Look, disabled the building and one shot at that, just like that. That's how powerful the Shake Foundation is. But I don't, I don't understand one thing. I don't understand why uh, Mr. Smog was never going for the Battle Wagons. He was never, ever, in the four games now, he's playing the Dwarven faction, getting one Battle Wagon on the field so far. I mean, they got nerfed through, but they are not useless. You can get them on the field with the Banakiri upgrade. Engma has no way of nullifying your leadership. You can use them like a Wall King statue, you know? And they're gonna be still impactful. They're gonna make your unit stronger, if nothing else. But I don't understand why he was not even one time getting... Oh, there we go. Long shot is incoming. They didn't have the heavy armor, that's why they are almost getting one-shotted to those rangers. King Brand almost level 7. Level 7 is gonna unlock the Beast Slayer arrow, which should be enough to one-shot one of the giants from the summon, for example. Oh, what is, what is my friend Gloin doing there? Nice dodge here from Sauron, he's paying attention everywhere, Black Nomonorians now with the heavy armor, guys. And Forge Blades coming up next. Gloin is running for his life. He's a little fat uh, dwarf. He's not very fast and mobile. Men of Tail Summon are still remaining on the field, they're gonna be coming now for this spot to keep this Gloin protected. There is some Anchor he can now use to get away. Alright, that's gonna be enough, but they're gonna be gone very very soon as you can see. Mr. Smog is still in the game. Let's take a look into the power points, shall we? So, Mr. Sauron has 24 power points collected, guys. 24. 
So only one power point away from the 25. Zero battle wagon exactly. Not a single one, as Erby said in the chat, for the entire game. Frozen land, Orc summon into the Felwind, and look at this King Brand. He's being, you know, kind of surrounded and dying so fast. Even though he's level 7, he's getting bursted down in a single second, just like that. Alright, now we have uh, Waldo back in the business. 26 power points collected for Engma player Sauron. And we have almost 18 power points collected for Mr. Smug. He didn't use one time the Undermine just yet. I think he could have used it now by the time two or three times. He can go for the Barrage potentially, which can be used defensively to deal with the enemy units, like in this situation for example. Uh, he needs to do that. I think he can't afford to wait for 25. He has nothing to defend this attack. Gloin got killed, I believe, right? Where is Gloin? No, he's here. Oh, Undermine is being used to knock up the Giants as well. Uh, but again, it's just disabling them, buying you some seconds, but that's it pretty much. It's gonna get one-shotted. He's gonna go for the Orc, uh, not Orc, um, kinda Orc. Uh, Orbit allies summon defensively. They are using the rocks to kill these Giants, but they are not gonna die very fast. Rebuild is available. The first... No, it's not even a battle wagon. It's a catapult. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a catapult. Maybe Demolisher is the way to go. The Hobbits are gonna be able to take down this... One of the Giants, though. Nice shot. Oil bottle was used. Also from this catapults here, pot potentially can be used. I hear Frodo screaming. He needs help. This is the Peregrine Took. Mary is going down next. The Giant is taking some damage over time, but he's still remaining on the field. The Fortress, however, is still safe. The Cutter has been taken down. There is nothing to defend him. No units. No heroes. No Cutters. Because Gloin is around this area. And he was using the Shake Foundation. He was trying to use Shake Foundation, I believe, against this building, but Snowbind was used to keep it alive. Okay. The Giant is not going to be able to finish off this game, to finish off this fortress, but I think incredible amount of damage dealt to the economy and to the buildings, uh, to the units from the uh, Dwarven player Mr. Smog now. He's really behind. And Gloin is going down next. Heal is being used, but I think he has no way of escaping this, right? That's the weakness, right? He is very immobile. Everyone can chase him in seconds. He's trying hard to run for his life, but again, there is no backup. The mineshaft is very, very, very far away. He's trying to press S to make the enemy unit stop. He's trying hard to save the hero. Heal is on cooldown, so he can't save him. Gloin is calling for his son. But his son is not here to save the daddy, Gloin, and he's going down. Remember he lost also King Brand before, so no heroes on the field anymore for Mr. Smog. And I can't believe that. I think it's kind of sad because this game had so much more potential. Smog had such a great lead with full command points, you know, having important heroes on the field. But I don't understand, maybe he doesn't like the Battle Wagons because there, there can't be any other reason why he was not going for the Battle Wagons, not one time. And yeah, uh, now we need a miracle in order to for Mr. Smog to turn this game around. And if Sauron wins that, the bracket is going to be resetted. And we're going to see another best of 9 series between the same players. So it's not, nothing is decided just yet. Because in order to become the champion, Sauron once again has to win against Mr. Smog the best of 9 series. Right, Berant is on the field, almost level 7. Brand is very squishy hero, you know? Or Exo, thank you so much for the follow. I don't know, man, make sure of X. Let's see. I don't plan in the future that much, you know? I'm a spontaneous guy. I just think about the next three minutes, maybe. That's it. <laughs> Alright, so 15 power points collected. He can go for the... No, he can go for the thing. That's it. For the barrage. I don't know why he's not going for it in the first place. Maybe he's trying to save for the 25. Who knows? Hey, Palonzo, welcome. 500 command points available now. 500 command points available. Only. He was at some point for and at full command points. The map is looking super blue to me, guys. At the bottom left side of our screen, the minimap. And Sauron is doing a nice job, not only micro-wise, but also macro-wise. Which is necessary on big on big maps like this one, for example, right? It's Gepa Rohan. And Smokey is being in a prison. He's being in jail. Yeah, that's all he got. There's barely any units around. He was sticking up to extroverts only. 
He lost the Forge Works. It means he can't even buy upgrades on his units anymore, guys. That's not possible. Oh, 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 oh. The big bad wolf, ladies and gentlemen, is being summoned now. This is not TFME like. I don't like this that much, but, you know. He's not looking very happy. <laughs> Alright, he's gonna commit now against the towers as the expansions. The field trolls with upgrades, they are very tanky, quite strong, dealing tons of damage. Uh, he's trying to kill all the expansions around the fortress with the wolf. No heroes, no units for defense. That might be it. That might be it. The only thing, the only possible thing that can save Mr. Smog here is if Sauron losing the connection. <laughs> Will Smog say GG? I don't think so. They didn't They didn't say GG one time to each other. You can see. It's not like friends are fighting against each other. They want to win. To be able to trash talk against each other. That's what they want to do. But, you know. Sauron, well done. Well done. Definitely well deserved the victory. But it's only the first best of 9 series. In order to become the champion. He has to defeat uh, Mr. Smog one more time. And it's not only... This is the second time he has to do that. That's going to be the third time they're going to face against each other in this tournament. The first time they faced against each other in the tournament was in the finals of the winner bracket, which was won by Mr. Smog 4-1. And now, this series is going to be won by Sauron. That means, in terms of score, it's 1-1. The next game is not going to... The next series is not going to only decide who the champion is going to be, but also it's going to decide who is going to win the 1v1 between the two players in long terms so it's gonna be a nice to watch this hopefully tomorrow i will keep you guys updated of course in discord i can't force now the players to play another best of nine series because mr smog was not feeling well at the first place let's save this one but this best of nine is over guys